virus-related uncertainty. Yeah, so, I mean, again, quite a similar uh, or quite a, a familiar tone so far from the luxury sector. Can't really predict exactly how things are going to go, but there was some stuff in Ferragamo today saying that they're seeing a slight upturn after a very poor performance in China recently. The problem, of course, is that although China is getting better, the virus has spread elsewhere, and so while China may well be showing some signs of improvement, other markets are not, um, and, and they are effectively saying what a lot of companies are saying, that at the moment it's almost impossible to quantify. All right, thanks very much indeed. Uh, Bloomberg Sam Unstead there joining us live in the studio with stocks to watch. Thanks very much for being with us. Okay, let's uh, take you to our top stories this morning. and uh, We begin, of course, with the Bank of England, which has cut rates by 50 basis points at a special meeting. The Monetary Policy Committee voted unanimously to reduce that rate. The central bank is also introducing a new term funding scheme in excess of £100 billion pounds with incentives for small and medium-sized businesses. We will be bringing you full coverage of the Bank of England press conference, which is actually taking place today, this morning, 9am London time. It's going to be extremely closely watched, of course, and also today it's the budget. Uh, there's now likely to be unleashed some short-term stimulus to combat the coronavirus. Bloomberg Westminster Sebastian Salek has the preview. Britain's new Chancellor of the Exchequer, Rishi Sunak, will be setting out his first budget and is expected to promise as much as £600 billion to be spent on infrastructure across the country as the government is set to use a huge increase in borrowing to end the era of austerity. The money will be targeted on roads, railways, housing, digital connectivity and research and development in a spending spree that is critical to Prime Minister Boris Johnson's mission. But the Chancellor's hands may be tied by the need to build a contingency fund to deal with the possible effects of coronavirus on the economy. In London, I'm Sebastian Salik, Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. Meanwhile, when it comes to the latest in terms of the coronavirus in the UK, the Conservative Health Minister Nadine Doris has actually become the first MP to be diagnosed with the disease. The 62-year-old confirmed that she is self-isolating at home, but she started to become unwell on Thursday, the same day that she attended a Downing Street event, which was hosted by the Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Meanwhile, while the National Health Service is increasing the number of virus tested processes to 10,000 per day. That's an increase of 500%. The escalation comes as the number of cases in the UK tops 370 and the death of the sixth British patient who was a person with underlying health conditions who caught the coronavirus in the UK. Meanwhile, in Italy, the government is set to double the amount of fiscal stimulus to tackle the coronavirus. It is increasing the amount of money on offer for the fourth time in a month. That's after the European Union agreed to stretch its budget rules to help member states fight the outbreak. Italy is now looking at as much as 16 billion euros of additional spending. And in the US, which now has more than 1,000 confirmed cases of coronavirus, according to John Hop Johns Hopkins University, which also shows 28 deaths in the country. The director of the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said on Tuesday that America had lost valuable time in tracking the virus. Some regions now can merely try to cope with its spread rather than actually stop it. But even as the outbreak ramps up in the US, the White House is not ready to unveil the details of its plan to mitigate the outbreak's economic impact. A promised press conference by President Donald Trump never materialized on Tuesday evening. In his place, economic advisor Larry Kudlow promised more details to reporters soon. The okay, let's get that. Is strong. We also know there are going to be problems ahead. We know there are going to be challenges ahead. Don't deny it. Uh, we'll see. I want to take that a day at a time and a fact at a time. And at some point in the, in the uh, near future, we will outline a more detailed uh, package for you. So Cudlow added that tax proposals will be ready this summer or in early autumn. Right, let's get the latest now in global news with Leanne Gerrans. Now, Leanne, you're starting in Australia. Yes, good morning, Roger. Australia will open as many as 100 pop-up clinics to test for the coronavirus. This is part of a $1.6 billion package. There are 112 confirmed virus cases in the country and three deaths. Bloomberg's Jason Scott has more. The clinics to be staffed by doctors and nurses will be able to cater for as many 75 people a day over six months. Prime Minister Scott Morrison's multi-billion dollar economic stimulus package, believed to be aimed at supporting small business and cutting export costs, will be announced on Thursday. In Canberra, Jason Scott, Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. 
Crossing over to Europe, the Spanish government has announced further measures to try to contain the spread of the virus after ordering the closure of all schools and universities in Madrid. The new measures include banning all flights from Italy and all top league football and basketball matches will be played behind closed doors for the next few weeks. The government is also looking into new social and economic measures to help fight the spread of the coronavirus. There are currently 1,622 cases in the country and 30 35 people have died. A postponement or delay to the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo is, quote, inconceivable. That's according to the Japanese minister responsible for the Games. She was responding to comments made by a member of the organizing committee, which suggests a possible delay of up to two years over coronavirus fears. Currently, there are fewer than 600 cases in Japan. And now in the U.S., Joe Biden has extended his lead over Bernie Sanders in the race to become the Democratic candidate for the presidential election. Election. He won the Michigan primary, a key battleground state that Sanders won four years ago, and Biden also won Missouri, Mississippi, and Idaho. Biden spoke to supporters after the polls closed. It's more than a comeback, in my view, our campaign. It's a comeback for the soul of this nation. This campaign is taking off, and I believe we're going to do well from this point on. Take nothing for granted. The pair are battling to go up against Donald Trump in November. Global News 24 hours a day on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerrans. This is Bloomberg Caroline. Thank you so much, Leanne Gerrans, keeping us across the wider (laughs) coronavirus story and all of the politics. Let's get the morning sports news now. Here's Andrew Hawes, also starting with the latest defeat uh, for Spurs in the Champions League. Tottenham were well beaten by RB Leipzig as they went out of the Champions League to the German side in the last 16. They lost 3-0 to complete a 4-0 aggregate defeat. In the other match, Atalanta won 4-3 in an empty stadium in Valencia to go through 8-4. Liverpool have to try and overturn a 1-0 deficit at home to Atletico Madrid tonight in their last 16 Champions League tie at Anfield. They've had to register a shot on target in their defeat in Spain, but manager Jurgen Klopp says that doesn't tell the whole story. No shots on target sounds like we had no chances. That's not that's not the, the, the fact. We had situations, we had good situations, but we played against uh, a team who was probably world's best in deep defending. Manchester City will be having to bounce back from their defeat against rivals Manchester United at the weekend when they face him from Arsenal this evening. It's a return to the Etihad Stadium for Mikel Arteta, who left his job as Pep Guardiola's assistant to take over at the North London Club. And there's a huge match in the Scottish Premiership later as the bottom side Hearts travel to second from bottom St Mirren. Three points separate the two teams in the table with only nine games remaining. And the big race on day two of the Cheltenham Festival takes place today without its star attraction. Altior misses the Queen Mother Champion Chase, which he's won for the past two years. Philip Hobbs' Deffy de Soy is favoured in his absence. And Nicky Henderson claimed an eighth champion hurdle on day one with the victory of Epitons. Andrew Horse there with all the latest sport. Now, the impact of that Bank of England unexpected cut in the rate has, well, it's been considerable, uh, coming ahead as it does, of course, of one of the most watched budgets in recent UK history, which is coming up in about four hours' time from now. Rishi Sunak, the new Chancellor, interest as to whether this is coordinated and how coordinated it is, but we're certainly beginning to see some of the potential results from it, not least, I think, the rise in European futures, currently Stocks 50 futures, up one8 Yeah, uh, indeed. And uh, the market obviously uh, opening up uh, 1.8% higher on the Eurostox 600 index. UK gilt yields at spot 26, so up by two and a half basis points. I point you to this, uh, Roger. Within six minutes of that decision happening, uh, Marcus Ashworth, our Bloomberg Opinion columnist, had a great piece out. Britain reaches for the coronavirus bazooka, unchanged from the EU. Is this the moment for Boris Johnson's government uh, to show how coordinated we can be in the UK. Is it going to be perhaps a template for others? We'll see how that all plays out. We'll hear from the budget, of course, later. This is Bloomberg. Not completing high school is more of a social thing than it was an academic thing. I came out in the 11th grade. Nobody was embracing you. The kids were cruel. It was very difficult to be gay. 
Even though all these years have passed, I still had that longing to have my diploma. The hard part was determining that I was going to do it, but I definitely didn't do it alone. At age 30, with the help of her mentor, Carissa finished her high school diploma. I have a mentor, Maria. She convinced me to continue my education and finish what I started to get my diploma. She just never judges. She's a true role model. If you're even considering getting your high school diploma, go get it. You can do it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Something remarkable happens when just the right elements come together. Ideas with technology. Data with inspiration. Investors with solutions. This is what Invesco does every day. Because they believe the possibilities of life and investing are greater when we come together. Invesco. Let's invest in greater possibilities together. To learn more, visit Invesco.com slash together. Invesco Distributors Incorporated. Adopt US Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting A Teenager Learning the Lingo Jelly Jelly Adjective Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same Visit AdoptUSKids.org Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Adopt US Kids and the Ad Council Influential conversations from Bloomberg Television. Here's Emily Chang on Bloomberg Technology. Now to discuss further economic impact of the coronavirus, I want to bring in Secretary Carlos Gutierrez from Washington. He is currently the chair of the Albright Stonebridge Group. And prior to that, he served as Commerce Secretary to President George W. Bush and was also the CEO and chair of the multinational food giant Kellogg. What is your reaction to what we know and the statements that the president has made so far? about his plan? Well, you know, it's hard to say because we don't know what the plan is, but conceptually, the idea of a stimulus strikes me as solving the wrong problem. I mean, it's a good tactic. It may be a good backstop, but we have a medical problem here, not a monetary or a fiscal or, uh, or anything else. The only solution in front of us is medical. So are we putting enough resources behind finding a vaccine? Uh, do we understand the virus? Have we ordered enough testing kits? So, you know, today we say, well, there are a small number of people who have been affected. Our problem is that we haven't tested many people. In fact, of all the countries that have been impacted by the virus, we're the ones who have done the least testing. Hear more interviews like this one on Bloomberg Television, streaming live on Bloomberg.com and on the Bloomberg mobile app, or check your local cable listings. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on QuickTake by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg's European headquarters in London, I'm Roger Hearing with this Bloomberg Radio Business Flash. And uh, 17 minutes into the European opening, we certainly seem to be seeing the response, perhaps, to that Bank of England surprise rate cut. Stock 600 up 1.7%, FTSE 100 up 1.7%, CAC up just over 2%. DAX up 1.7%, the IBEX up 2.19%, and the FTSE MIB up 2.2%. Uh, the suspicion is that this rate cut clearly is pushing the ECB into perhaps further action. That's what we might be reading into this. Uh, in the U.S. Uh, opening, uh, S&P uh, futures 1.8% down at the moment. Dow down 1.7%, and NASDAQ down 1.8% futures as well. Concern there, I guess, about perhaps the lack of action that seems to have been after that expected press conference from Donald Trump not materializing in terms of any uh, stimulus for the U.S. economy in the light of the virus. And keeping an eye on oil, which was also, of course, pushing events at the beginning of the week. WTI 33.94 is where we find it. Brent crude, $36.96 the barrel. That news, of course, that Aramco is ramping up the amount. It's going to produce 13 million barrels a day from 12 million barrels, maybe having an effect dragging its 
slightly back down. Certainly oil isn't making up the losses it had at the beginning of the week. And keeping an eye on bonds, US 10-year treasuries, 0.7, that's nine basis points down. And German Bund, uh, zero, negative 0.76 is where we find that right now. And looking at gilts, of course, in the light of what's been happening in the UK, 0.27 is where we find that. That's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Now here's Leanne Gerrans with more on what's going on around the world. Roger, thank you. Across Africa, officials are bracing for the rapid spread of coronavirus. There are concerns an outbreak could devastate the region, which accounts for 16% of the global population, but just 1% of healthcare spending. The fight against coronavirus would steer resources away from malaria and HIV, which kills hundreds of thousands of people every year. Earlier this month, the IMF pledged to make $10 billion available at zero interest to help poor countries, especially in Africa, tackle the virus. One of the world's biggest music festivals, Coachella, has been postponed because of the coronavirus outbreak. The event in California, which has been headlined by Rage Against the Machine, Travis Scott and Frank Ocean, was due to take place next month. It'll now be held in October. And the former Hollywood movie producer Harvey Weinstein will be sentenced later today. The 67-year-old was found guilty of raping and sexually assaulting two women by a jury in New York last month. He now faces up to 29 years in jail. His defence team is planning to appeal the convictions. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. Anya Gerrans, this is Bloomberg. Caroline. Thank you so much, Leanne. Now, the emergency rate cut out of the Bank of England this morning has, well, livened up the markets. Uh, the announcement came as traders were awaiting the details of a £600 billion stimulus package from the UK government today. The question facing investors now is how can policymakers globally fend off a recession with the toolkits that they have being depleted? Joining us now down the line from Singapore, Cross Asset Markets Editor Joanna Ossinger. Uh, look, um, it's really been a bit of a mess in terms of the coronavirus response. One-off rate cuts, bit of liquidity, different fiscal promises. Does anything change now with this Bank of England rate cut? It might a little bit because it's something, right? And it, as people have said just a little bit ago, it looks like that people are encouraged that the ECB might do something on the back of that. But we still have a lot of things to go. We still are watching whether markets really react to this, whether central banks still have the firepower that they have enjoyed over, say, the past decade, um, and whether they're able to um, stimulate the markets. And that then watching all these fiscal things and whether they work out. And one thing in particular, whether any fiscal aid really lines up with what ends up being hurt by the coronavirus, because there can be kind of unexpected issues or things that happen in one sector that you wouldn't have expected versus another, and whether fiscal uh, help really lines up with that. Yeah, well, that's an interesting one to, to pick up on, Joanna, because, uh, as you say, this fiscal help, it depends where it's, where it's aimed at. Where should it be aimed at? Where are the sectors it needs to be able to help? Well, definitely um, travel and leisure, for instance, has been hurt a lot. But then you have the issue of if people objected to bailouts of banks in the financial crisis, are they going to object to bailouts of, say, cruise lines and airlines? Um, so there's a, a, there might be some hesitance on the part of some policymakers to do a lot with that. But, you know, a lot of things like whether um, companies can keep people in jobs, whether people are getting as much work as they might have that's probably a lot of it is whether they can keep the consumers going at this time yeah absolutely just anecdotally i feel like i've heard from uh, from people that i know about you know concerns and sort of not wanting to make decisions amidst uncertainty but look how far do you think that we've actually come in terms of repricing european equity markets i mean i, I mentioned recession and that is obviously on everybody's minds Oh, definitely. I mean, it, when you have the stock 600 down, say, 20% since its peak just a few weeks ago, that's a decent repricing. But, of course, if you have a global recession, then that might not be enough, right? But it's pretty uncertain as to exactly what the impact really will be of the coronavirus. And that's why we're seeing so much volatility right now, things bouncing around. But it might be enough. It might not be enough. Sockgen was out this morning saying they feel like the value of European equities 
Texas is brought back to earth. They're suggesting an overweight on oil and gas now. Um, so some people might be saying that. Others are saying sell into strength. So it's definitely, the market is still fairly tenuous today as and headline driven as people are watching for every little bit of news. Okay, Joanna, thanks so much. Joanna Ossinger there, Cross Arc Market Assets Markets Editor on the line from Singapore. And what she said is a <clears throat> pretty volatile day. I mean, we just look across what's been happening uh, in terms of the currency market, particularly in response, I guess, to the Bank of England uh, rate cuts. Currently, cable 1.29, actually not move very much there. But uh, pound euro 1.14, a little bit more of a movement. I think a sense also that the yen is, is bid 10, well, it's actually, it's going, yeah, going down. Of it. 105.04 is where we find that. Confusion, I think, out there. U.S. Treasuries, Caroline, being still the place to go with people worried about where their money should be. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen, what, five sessions where we've seen more than 10 basis point moves in benchmark U.S. yields. We trade at one uh, spot at 70 basis points at the moment. But straight ahead on Bloomberg Daybreak Europe, the U.K. Chancellor set to deliver the biggest spending budget in a decade. How much of that will be on the infrastructure that the government wants versus having to deal with coronavirus? That's next. This is Bloomberg. With the Bloomberg Business of Sports Report, I'm Charlie Pellet. Brought to you by Granger, America's trusted source for industrial and safety supplies. Visit Granger.com. The International Olympic Committee and local organizers say this year's Olympic Games are on, but the clock is ticking amid coronavirus fears. The fate of the Tokyo Games touches 11,000 Olympic and 4,400 Paralympic athletes, coaches, and sports officials, local Local organizers, the Japanese government, and national morale, along with international broadcasters, fans, and world sponsors. Major League Baseball says it does not plan to alter its schedule because of the coronavirus outbreak. In a statement, the league said, quote, while MLB recognizes the fluidity of this rapidly evolving situation, our current intention is to play spring training and regular season games as scheduled. And that's the Bloomberg Business of Sports Report. I'm Charlie Pellet. The market's in focus every business day. The P&L Podcast with Paul Sweeney and Lisa Abramowitz. Are there some sectors that you want to have more or less exposure to? What's behind this engine of gains? Analysis of the day's Wall Street action. The U.S. market looks relatively safe. From Bloomberg Intelligence, Bloomberg Opinion, and influential newsmakers. Ward McCarthy joins us right now. P&L with Paul Sweeney and Lisa Abramowitz. Listen today on Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, or subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Hello, I'm here to tell you that age really does bring wisdom and you may still have plenty to contribute. At Eisner Amper, we're successful at helping business owners and entrepreneurs assess and plan for the future as well as maximize where you are in the present. If you're curious about how to plan for both your professional and personal future, come and talk to us. I'm Lisa Stewart, principal in charge of the Center for Family Business Excellence, and I'd love to help you to find the right path forward. You can find us at eisneramper.com slash family. Asset manager. Whatever job you're searching for, you can find it on LinkedIn. First jobs, flexible jobs, work from home on a Friday jobs, advertising jobs, accounting jobs, HR, PR, even ER jobs, Soho jobs, Shoreditch jobs. Keep me away from the central line jobs, banking jobs, building jobs, never ever boring jobs, small jobs, big jobs, lunch in borough market jobs, or even voiceover jobs, which is how I ended up recording this ad. Search millions of jobs on LinkedIn and find one meant for you. This one shouldn't take long. Of course, if it had a cover, I might not be bothered. Can't see what's under there. And then they'd have chained the back wheel. It would have taken me much longer, especially if the chain's off the ground. Makes it harder to cut. This one doesn't even have a lock on the front. So, in the time I've been talking to you, I've nicked it. On average, in London, a scooter or motorbike is stolen every hour. Make sure it's not yours. Lock your bike, chain the rear wheel, and cover to make it harder to steal. Lock, chain, cover. The Met Police. Delayed at the dentist, and now you're late for school pickup. You need a free now. Need to take the dog to the vet before lunch. Should have gotten a free now. Trying to get four kids and their baggage to the airport. Free now. Sometimes you can't get from A to B fast enough. Download the Free Now app today for quick pickups and reliable drivers, no matter the situation. Less hassle, more hustle with Free Now. 
At the Bank of Antandek, they've created Stan, a smart bot that can predict the future of remortgaging. I'll read Stan. Will my mortgage rate go up? 1955 was the last time Newcastle won the cup. No, I'm try not to mumble. Playing. Let's get ready to rumble. Oh. Oh. Meanwhile, at Santander, they can't predict your future, but they'll help secure it with great mortgage rates fixed for up to 10 years. See what's possible at Santander. Early repayment charges apply. Lending subject to status and criteria. Your home may be repossessed if you do not keep up repayments on your mortgage. The government has coordinated and streamlined its coronavirus messaging, but is it the right message? What's really necessary is for the people in the government who don't know the details to stop telling us things like there will be a vaccine in one year. Stop it. That's not helpful. Making sense of the noise and the silence on this week's On the Media from WNYC. Listen to the On the Media podcast from WNYC Studios on TuneIn today. When you're not listening to your team, take it to the end zone, the rim, or the net. Keep up with the biggest moments in sports by following TuneIn on social media. Block, hook, into the end zone for the touchdown. From reminders of the live top games to tips of the best sports stations and podcasts. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless. Follow at TuneIn on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to get the most out of TuneIn. The puck drops. Twelve players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. Tune in brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on Tune In. The bond markets this morning we trade at 69 basis points for U.S. benchmark yield. So another big move uh, as yields head down by 11 basis points. U.K. yields at 27, uh, so gaining three basis points after that surprise interest rate cut by the Bank of England just about an hour and a half ago. And also ahead of uh, the Bank of England uh, giving a press conference later. The Blue McDonald's Port Index weaker two-tenths of one percent. The pound stronger three-tenths of one percent. And in the oil markets, actually we head lower down by 1.6 percent on WTI. Crude futures thirty three dollars seventy nine. Brent crude at thirty six seventy. So that oil uh, price shock continues. Now on to some of today's top stories. The Bank of England's cut rates by fifty basis points at a special meeting. The Monetary Policy Committee voted unanimously to reduce the rate. The central bank's also introducing a new term funding scheme in excess of a hundred billion pounds with incentives for small and medium businesses. And we'll have full coverage of the Bank of England press today at nine a.m. London time. Also today, the Chancellor. Rishi Sunak will use the budget to promise record infrastructure spending across the country. He'll pledge £600 billion by the middle of 2025, but the extra money is likely to be overshadowed by the coronavirus. The government is also preparing to offer money to businesses and also to the healthcare system to cope with the fallout. Well, speaking of the virus, the Conservative Junior Health Minister Nadine Doris has become the first MP to be infected. The 62-year-old confirmed she's self-isolating at home, but she started to become unwell on Thursday. Now, that's the same day that she attended a Downing Street event hosted by the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. Meanwhile, when it comes to Italy, uh, the um, Italian government is set to double the amount of fiscal stimulus uh, that it's going to offer to tackle the coronavirus. It's increasing the amount of money on offer for the fourth time in just a month. That's after the European Union agreed to stretch its budget rules to help member states fight the outbreak. Italy is now looking at as much as 16 billion euros of additional spending. Right, let's get the latest now in global news, and we can go to Leanne Gerrans. Now, Leanne, you start in Spain. Yes, good morning, Roger. The Spanish government has announced further measures to try and contain the spread of coronavirus after ordering the closure of all schools and universities in Madrid. Bloomberg's Rodrigo Olihuela reports. The new measures include banning all flights from Italy, suspending trips organized by the State Welfare Agency for the Elderly, and having all top league soccer and basketball matches played behind closed doors for two weeks. The government also said it is looking into new social and economic measures to help fight the spread of the virus. Madrid, Rodrigo Rihuela, Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. In Spain, there are currently 1,622 confirmed cases and 35 deaths. Now, Australia will open as many as 100 pop-up clinics to test for coronavirus. This is part of a $1.6 billion package. The 112 confirmed virus cases in the country at the moment and three deaths. The clinics will be staffed by doctors and nurses and will be able to cater for as many as 75 people a day over six months. Prime Minister Scott 
Morrison's multi-billion dollar economic stimulus package, believed to be aimed at supporting small businesses and cutting export costs, will be announced on Thursday. Now, in the U.S., Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden has won Michigan, the biggest prize of Tuesday's primaries. He also won in Missouri, Mississippi and Idaho, further widening his lead over Senator Bernie Sanders. Next week, the focus turns to Illinois, Ohio, Florida and Arizona. And finally, Vladimir Putin has set the stage for him to stay on as Russia's president for potentially another 16 years. Bloomberg's Henry Mayer says this reverses his past opposition to scrapping term limits so that he and only he can continue to rule the country. Putin, 67, made the announcement in an unscheduled speech before the state Duma, the lower house of parliament, after a surprise appeal by ruling United Russia lawmakers for him to stay on as president beyond the end of his current term in 2024. In Moscow, Henry Mayer, Bloomberg Daybreak Europe. Global news 24 hours a day on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerrans. This is Bloomberg Caroline. Great stuff. Thank you so much, Leanne Gerrans. Well, now to politics here in the UK, where we get the first budget since 2018 at 12.30 p.m. Uh, today. The Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, only in the job for around four weeks, is set to outline a huge increase in spending on roads, rail, ways and much more but then there's also the virus spending related to this is likely to dominate proceedings as british businesses that have been put under pressure by the outbreak already look to government help joining us now in our london studio rain newton smith who is the chief economist at the cbi very good morning thank you so much for joining us rain look what should the government do in the face of the virus now I think it's the time uh, for taking calm, measured uh, action right now. And we've seen the Bank of England act this morning. All eyes are now on the Chancellor. And I think what we want to see is that real focus on making it easy to support our health services uh, and people. And, and that's the primary concern. I think, secondly, it's about how we support the wider economy. So the Bank of England action is really important, thinking how we can make sure that credit flows through the economy. Uh, there may be businesses and sectors uh, we know now are particularly affected. Those in tourism, uh, in hospitality uh, are finding things difficult. And I think as we see more people needing to self-isolate, that could extend. It will be for a short period of time. So what you want to do is to make sure you have emergency funds that those businesses can protect, protect as many jobs as possible. And that we ensure that all critical services are getting to the people who, they, who need them over the coming weeks. But is anything Thing really that the Bank of England, the Chancellor mm. can do, actually going to put off the horrifying fact, perhaps, that we, we can't avoid a recession, that, that maybe, maybe the situation is so bad uh, just because of the virus that at least for a short period, that is simply unavoidable. I, I wouldn't. I, I think at the moment it, we don't know that. We, what we're seeing at the moment is some impact on growth this quarter. But I think we can also look at the experience of other countries. And if you look at what's happened in China, they had lots of measures. They used technology. They used their very best of their health services to really contain this virus. And now what we're seeing is production has opened back up. And I would expect that over the next six months, China is really able to support growth in, in their own economy. And I think we'll see that here. So it's mm. going to be a difficult few weeks, but I think if we are calm, measured, and we have the policies we need uh, in place to act quickly, we will get through this. Yeah. And I think one of the other things that businesses are really saying is, yes, we need some emergency measures in, pe in place in case we need to activate them. But the other thing we really need to think about is some of the long-term decisions. So mm. we want to see those critical decisions on infrastructure, on innovation, on skills. We want yeah. those decisions Direction. taken now because that gives confidence that we will get through this and yeah. we need to think what kind of economy we want in six months' time yeah. as I'll, well as being prepared for the immediate. I'll point out, Rain, as you, I'm sure, will well know, um, China acted swiftly, yes, and wholeheartedly, but of course yeah. it won't stop the first quarter uh, GDP yes. figures are looking you know, abs absolutely Very cratering, weird. frankly. Yeah. But what about the government strategy when it comes to the actual action uh, on coronavirus? The hand-washing campaign 
line. Is mm. this is actually a good strategy? I mention this because it's been pointed out in other countries. Um, you know, th this is the minimalist approach, is it not? It's also the kind of behavioural psychological approach rather than action like cutting uh, schools, uh, shutting, uh, you know, large events and so on. Is this the right strategy? I think for the moment it is. And I think what we're seeing from government is they're being uh, guided scientific evidence. Uh, and I think we are looking at self-isolation as being really important. And I think when you look at how businesses are preparing, they are thinking about how they can support as many staff as possible to work from home for periods of time, how they can make sure that other people are trained in some of the critical roles they may need, so that whatever happens, they can keep goods and services being produced in in factories uh, and make sure that goods and services Six can get to the Six out of ten European wo workers have not worked from home in 20 2018. Are we any better positioned in the UK? I think we are better positioned from the businesses I've been speaking to. They've absolutely been putting measures in place, uh, whether that's simple things like having laptops for everyone uh, and making sure that everyone takes them home uh, uh, every night. Thinking about how you communicate with your, your staff when they're working from home. These are things that businesses are absolutely doing now. Now, look, in some sectors, you cannot do that as easily. Uh, but I think those businesses are thinking about what measures they can put in place to be prepared. So briefly, Ray, not a shutdown like we've seen in Italy, you don't think that would be a way of tackling this head-on in a way that would get rid of it perhaps more quickly? Look, I think that's really one for the government, and it really depends how the virus moves around and what happens uh, from here. Businesses are prepared for that, if that's what we come to. And I think the other thing we know from experience in China is that would be these are temporary measures, and you need to think about when you use them to make them as effective as possible. That's what we want to see. I think businesses want to see that calm, measured, prepared approach to what we are are facing, but also thinking we will get through this. We can see that from other countries, but we need to do whatever it takes now to be ready to face the weeks ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us in the London studio. That's Ray Newton-Smith, the chief economist at the CBI. Obviously, as businesses, as government, the Bank of England, trying to prepare the country uh, for the coronavirus, the impact on people and workers here. This is Bloomberg. Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that our daughters have what they need to grow and learn. But that isn't the case for nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. that struggle with hunger. Childhood hunger is a heartbreaking reality that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and provides it to families and children in need. You can help kids in need in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Witham offers an elite team of seasoned specialists providing world-class advisory, audit, and tech solutions to the financial services industry. Hi, I'm Tom Angel, partner and practice leader of Witham's Financial Services Group. Witham is a nationally recognized advisory and accounting firm serving private equity, venture capital, hedge funds, broker-dealers, 40 Act funds, and SPACs. We provide customized support to our clients, especially emerging managers. Our deep experience and expertise makes Witham the firm of choice in the financial service industry. Visit Witham.com to contact a member of Witham's Financial Services team. Elite advisory firms rely on BNY Mellon's Pershing to meet the needs of their most complex clients. Karen Novak, Chief Operating Officer at Pershing Advisor Solutions, explains how. At BNY Mellon's Pershing, we bring customized insights and strategies to help you grow your advisory business and stay on the leading edge. We can support the needs of your most sophisticated clients with a full range of investment and wealth management solutions from access to private banking to consolidated bank and brokerage custody. Learn why so many of the largest advisory firms turn to us for the financial strength the and high-touch service that BNY Mellon's Pershing can provide. Are you well positioned to stand out from your competition? Solutions. Learn more at Pershing.com or call 800-445-4467. Brokerage custody provided by Pershing LLC and other services provided by Pershing Advisor Solutions LLC. Both members of FINRA and CIPIC. Private banking and bank custody provided by BNY Mellon NA. Member FDIC. On average, in London, a scooter or motorbike is stolen every hour. Make sure it's on yours. Lock your bike, chain the rear wheel, and cover to make it harder to steal. Lock, chain, cover, the net police.
easy way to make your meeting in time. And with two minute central London pickups, you need not waste time searching for a taxi. Just download the free now app today and take the hassle out of getting round London. Ooh, welcome to Costco, the nation's favourite coffee shop. What can I get you? A flat white piece. And would you like to enter the 10 million point Costa Coffee Club giveaway? Oh, uh, yeah. And collect points towards free coffees and treats in store. Thank you. Final payment, stock vehicles only, minimum 10% deposit on Taraco. Indemnities may be required. Say at Financial Services. Hey, love. Who's this lot? Oh, they arrived with our new BT TV box. Right. That's the Night's Watch, Marcus Rashford, oh, and Catherine the Great. But who's hiding behind the curtain? Shh, that's Jack Ryan. Don't blow his cover. New BT TV, the new home for all the channels you love, including Sky Atlantic, Sky Cinema, Sky Sports from Now TV, Prime Video and BT Sport. Watch TV like never before. BT, beyond limits. New customers, BT TV available with BT Superfast Fiber. 20 form of term terms apply. You love tune in for live breaking news from CNN, MSNBC, Fox, CNBC, and more. But when you can't catch your favorite show as it airs, it might just be a click away as a podcast. Search your favorite news station to explore all the on demand news shows on tune in. Like what you're listening to? Want to make getting back to it easier? Use the favorite button to keep track of the stations and podcasts you love on TuneIn. Just tap or click the heart icon to add it to your favorites. Then find all your go-to audio under the favorites tab. Pretty easy, right? The puck drops. 12 players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. TuneIn brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to... When it matters most on TuneIn. When you're not listening to your team, take it to the end zone, the rim, or the net. Keep up with the biggest moments in sports by following TuneIn on social media. Block, into the end zone for the touchdown. From reminders of the live top games to tips of the best sports stations and podcasts. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless. Follow and tune in on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to get the most out of TuneIn. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on QuickTake by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. From Bloomberg's global headquarters in New York, I'm Anne-Marie Hordurm with this Bloomberg Radio Business Flash. Shock and awe this morning for the financial markets, given we have the BOE coming out with an emergency rate cut by 50 basis points to a quarter of a percent. All major European indices are higher this morning. The FTSE 100 up one and six tenths of a percent. CAX, DAC, the FTSE MIB, and Spain all up more than two percent. Uh, what investors may like about this is a dual approach from the BOE, delivering a large rate cut, but also they're targeting aid to businesses, given the economic Economic backlash from the coronavirus. Next, the spotlight goes on to the ECB. Bloomberg just had a scoop out this hour saying Lagarde warning of a 2008 style crisis. We'll see what she delivers tomorrow. In currencies this morning, we do see the euro one spot 13.23, a little bit firmer against the U.S. dollar. The pound clawing back some of the losses. We saw a drop when that rate decision came out. We're at 129.51, so just under 130 on cable, which I'll be tracking closely while I'm in New York for the time being. In U.S., though, we are seeing futures lower on the S&P 500. One 1.2% down. This also comes as President Donald Trump failed to show up to that news briefing that he said he was going to deliver this major economic plan, and that is a 
getting some of the concern here in the U.S. market. And then in oil today, we have to talk about oil given the price collapse on Monday. $37 on Brent, down four-tenths of a percent. This really comes this morning as Saudi Arabia says they will boost their maximum capacity 13 million barrels a day. That is something we haven't seen in a decade. Really ramping up that escalation of the price war with Moscow. That's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Now here's Leanne Garrens with more on what's going on around the world. Good morning, Leanne. Good morning, Anne-Marie. Some industries in the Chinese city of Wuhan, where the coronavirus outbreak began last year, are now set to resume. That's according to a statement from the provincial government. Key sectors such as public transport, medical supplies and producers of daily necessities will be allowed to return to work. But all schools in Hubei will remain closed and people are still not allowed to leave the province. Across Africa, officials are bracing for the rapid spread of the virus. There are concerns an outbreak could devastate the region, which accounts for 16% of the global population, but just 1% of healthcare spending. The fight against coronavirus would steer resources away from malaria and HIV, which kills hundreds of thousands of people every year. And a postponement or delay to the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo is, quote, inconceivable. That's according to the Japanese minister responsible for the Games. She was responding to comments made by a member of the organizing committee which suggested a possible delay of up to two years over coronavirus fears. Currently, there are fewer than 600 cases in Japan. Global News 24 hours a day, on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Leanne Gerrans. This is Bloomberg. Caroline. Great. Thanks so much, Leanne Gerrans, with the World News. Right, coming up next, our colleagues in the United States are getting ready for Bloomberg Daybreak. So let's check in with Amy Morris. Good morning, Amy. What's ahead for you? Caroline, good morning. You know, yesterday was a wild one on Wall Street. U.S. stock futures fell. Investors growing concerned that an economic stimulus plan that was promised by the Trump administration just isn't imminent. U.K. stocks jumped after the BOE came up with an emergency rate cut. So we're going to talk about all of that with Andrew Sheets at Morgan Stanley. We'll also look at the timing of President Trump's promised economic stimulus in the U.S. It is being promised as the Democratic presidential hopefuls come off another set of primaries. That was last night. Joe Biden was with now a nearly insurmountable lead over Bernie Sanders. And another debate is set for this weekend with another primary just around the corner. We're going to follow it all for you. All of this and more coming up on Bloomberg Daybreak. Caroline. Oh, great stuff. Thank you so much, Amy. Bloomberg Daybreak is up next. And if you're listening on London DAB Digital Radio, you'll hear Bloomberg Surveillance. And what we'll all be keeping an eye on, of course, is what's going on with the Bank of England and what's going to go on with the budget. The Bank of England cut rates by 50 basis points this morning. At a special meeting, the Monetary Policy Committee voted unanimously to reduce the rate. And our next guest argues the move sends a message of policy synchronization with the Treasury, setting the stage for a historic budget later today. Let's bring in Ranko Beric. Head of Market Analysis at Monex Europe. Ranko, also, we're getting this line now coming through from Christine Lagarde uh, saying that uh, there is uh, a risk of a 2008-style crisis unless there is urgent action. So the pressure is obviously building on the ECB, which we'll hear from tomorrow. But first of all, do you think there's pretty strong coordination between the Bank of England and Number 11? Yes, I think this is now showing us what Boris Johnson's motive was for getting rid of Sahir Javid originally, uh, which was very simply that he needed the Chancellor who was willing to expand fiscal policy very aggressively in the event of an economic shock. Now, of course, at the time, the shock they were thinking of was an escalation in Brexit uncertainty, but we now have this additional uh, incoming shock to the economy from coronavirus, uh, and, I mean, the timing of the rate cut from the Bank of England is unambiguous in the picture in the morning of probably the most significant budget um, since the days of Thatcher, I would argue. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. Going, going back to Thatcher, that certainly would be uh, significant. Um, but yeah, the question also is about, Roger, the short-term measures, because of course, we just spoke to the CBI's Rain Newton-Smith. She was very calm, uh, obviously, um, the chief economist at the business lobby, saying that UK businesses are prepared, getting prepared for the coronavirus impact. Only fewer than 400 cases confirmed in the UK at the moment. Um, but obviously, businesses will want a helping 
Counting Hands, so how much will that overshadow the budget? Yeah, I guess the CBI clearly has to perhaps put out the signs of, of confidence that things are going reasonably well. Perhaps it's a moment to circle the wagons rather than do anything more drastic. But I think there is definite concern out there, and I've heard it expressed, that perhaps what Italy is doing now is something the UK should do before it becomes uh, the problem that they had before. So, I mean, Ranka, let me bring you back in on this, if I may. So you were talking about, you know, pretty radical moves by the UK government. Can recession be staved off? A recession can't be staved off, no. I mean, there's no amount of uh, monetary easing that's going to prevent businesses from closing if the outbreak worsens, as seems uh, at this point fairly likely. But what it can do is drastically improve the quality of... Now we can see from the decisions that the UK government has made, there's an acknowledgement that George Osborne's austerity, austerity program after the financial crisis really uh, harmed the quality of the recovery in the UK economy. So we're seeing a rejection of that idea um, that the budget needs to be balanced in the short run or even in the medium term, um, and that opens the door to synchronised policy easing, which is what we're extremely likely to see today. Okay, so synchronised policy. In terms of the FX markets, obviously, um, uh, you know, your uh, specialisation, what does it mean in terms of the pound? We see a stronger pound up by uh, a quarter of 1% uh, against the US dollar trading at 129.45. We've also have seen, though, a stronger euro this morning, up three tenths of 1%. Is this all of a dollar story as we see the Bloomberg dollar spot index drop a quarter of 1%? Yeah, so firstly, there's the dollar story, which can't be ignored. Um, because rates in the U.S. were higher than elsewhere in the world, the precipitous fall that we've seen in the expectations for asset yields, essentially fixed income, asset yields, and Fed policy over the past month or so have absolutely hammered the dollar. So that's one part of the story. The other part of the story that I think is more interesting in the current context is the fact that markets aren't necessarily concerned about the prospect of an expansion in fiscal policy. And, of course, this was the argument under Osborne um, and other sort of finance ministers worldwide for austerity. It was the fear that if government spending was not slashed, um, interest rates would rise rapidly, that markets wouldn't be willing to buy um, the debt that was being used to fund this fiscal stimulus. And what we're seeing at the moment, as you mentioned, you know, Sterling is up on the day, um, is that markets are not only comfortable with the idea of expanded fiscal policy, they're actually actively sharing the prospect. And remember that when Sahid Javid was actually deposed, Sterling rallied in expectations of a boost in spending policy. So on the whole, um, it's a completely different paradigm in fixed income markets and in currencies. Um, there's not nearly as much um, fear or concern at the prospect of an expansion in spending to stave off an economic shock. Now, Ranka, I, the yen, obviously, the, the, one of the key haven currencies. We've seen some interesting movements in dollar-yen, I think, in the last uh, day or so. Uh, currently slightly weakening against the dollar, but obviously had a lot of strength put into it. Where do you see that going in the current climate, which with so much uncertainty? Well, the Bank of Japan is now in an extreme difficult situation because in, in almost any meaningful sense, um, they cannot weaken the yen materially in the face of a very large haven demand. Um, they could theoretically expand their purchase asset purchase program, but they're already buying equity ETFs. Uh, they could do direct currency intervention, but then they would risk the wrath of the U.S. Treasury and Donald Trump himself. So they're really looking at very limited options other than, of course, uh, fiscal stimulus, which brings us back to, I guess, the theme of this morning. Um, and the issue, of course, with fiscal stimulus in Japan is that um, there are credible concerns about the long-run sustainability of debt in Japan with their aging population. Uh, so, yeah, Japanese policymakers are in a very difficult spot. I think um, what we'll probably see from the Bank of Japan and actually the government um, is just any attempt to stave off the um, economic costs through fiscal stimulus, and the Bank of Japan will do what little they can to take the edge off the yen strength that we've seen recently. Okay, thank you so much, Ranko Baric, for joining us, Head of Market Analysis at Monex Europe. Really good to speak to you this morning. Yes, as we saw that Bank of England interest rate cut by 50 basis points just two hours ago, a surprise rate cut. The pound stronger by a quarter of 1%. Bloomberg dollar spot index weakens, uh, but it's really all about volatility, about what central banks and governments are doing to try to battle the coronavirus threat. And, and we did have that line from Christine Lagarde saying urgent action is necessary to try 
try and stave off a 2008-style crisis. And uh, we're certainly seeing optimism, really, in European stocks. Stock 600 up 2.25%. FTSE up 1.7%. So interesting moves at the moment. And uh, cable is on 1.29. This is Bloomberg. This one shouldn't take long. Of course, if it had a cover, I might not be bothered. Can't see what's under there. And they'd have chained the back wheel. It would have taken me much longer, especially if the chain's off the ground. Makes it harder to cut. This one doesn't even have a lock on the front. So, in the time I've been talking to you, I've nicked it. On average, in London, a scooter or motorbike is stolen every hour. Make sure it's not yours. Lock your bike, chain the rear wheel, and cover to make it harder to steal. Lock, chain, cover. The Met Police. We've all been in one, but how much do you really know about black cabs? For instance, did you know that a black cab has to be tall enough to accommodate an individual wearing a bowler hat? That's a lot of space for you and your briefcase. Or that free now drivers can use the bus lanes, the perfect getaway to make your meeting in time. And with two-minute central London pickups, you needn't waste time searching for a taxi. Just download the free now app today and take the hassle out of getting round London. This ad is made from 100% recycled commercials. Just like Smart Waters. Oh, new! Bottles are made from 100% recycled plastic. What's that number again? 100%. Every Smart Water bottle is made using recycled plastic. And because it's still 100% recyclable, the plastic will be used again and again. Smart Water. Now in a 100% recycled plastic bottle. Label and cap 100% recyclable, but not made from recycled plastic. Yet. We're working on it. Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Radio. Live from the Bloomberg Interactive Brokers Studios, this is Bloomberg Daybreak for Wednesday, March 11th, 2020. Coming up this hour. Primary wins in four states give Joe Biden a commanding lead over Bernie Sanders. U.S. futures fall after no firm stimulus plans emerge from the White House. The Bank of England issues an emergency rate cut to stem the fallout from coronavirus. The U.S. has shifted into a new phase of its coronavirus response. I'm John Tucker. The story is straight ahead. I'm John Stashow in sports. Nick's blew a big lead. Lost in Washington. Nets upset the Lakers. Rangers won. Islanders and Devils lost. And Hofstra's go into the NCAA. That's all straight ahead on Bloomberg Daybreak. On Bloomberg 1130 New York. Bloomberg 991 Washington, D.C. Bloomberg 1061 Boston. Bloomberg 960 San Francisco. Sirius XM 119. And around the world on BloombergRadio.com and via the Bloomberg Business app. Good morning, I'm Karen Moscow. I'm Amy Morris. Bloomberg Daybreak is brought to you by SEI. Built on advanced technologies and 50 years of innovation, SEI offers asset managers a comprehensive and flexible operations outsourcing platform. Go to seic.com slash IMS. It is 501 on Wall Street. U.S. futures and Treasury yields are falling while the dollar weakens, and we check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. S&P futures down 43 points, Dow futures down 338, NASDAQ futures down 121. The DAX in Germany is up 2.2 percent, CAC in Paris up 2.3 percent, FTSE 100 up one and a third percent. The Nikkei 225 in Japan fell two and a quarter percent, and the Hang Seng in Hong Kong down six tenths percent. Ten year Treasury up 21 30 seconds, yield 0.73%, and the yield on the two year 0.45%. NYMEX crude oil is down 1.3% or 45 cents at 33.91 a barrel. COMEX gold down 2 tenths percent or $2.80 at 16.57.40 an ounce. The euro 1.1320 against the dollar, the yen 105.20. Amy. Karen, we're going to get to the markets and stimulus plans from the White House in just a moment. But first, we start with Joe Biden opening a commanding lead over Bernie Sanders. It's more than a comeback, in my view, our campaign. It's a comeback for the soul of this nation. Biden addressed supporters after primary wins in Missouri, Mississippi, Idaho, and the biggest prize of the night, Michigan. Here with more is Kevin Cirilli from our Bloomberg 99.1 newsroom in Washington. This was a state that President Trump defeated Hillary Clinton in by 0.3 percentage points in the 2016 presidential election. And it's also a state that Senator Bernie Sanders defeated Hillary Clinton in during the 2016 primary race. 
Joe Biden now has more than 820 delegates compared to 660 for Bernie Sanders. Contests in Washington and North Dakota are too close to call. And we should mention Michael Bloomberg, the founder and majority owner of Bloomberg LP, the parent company of Bloomberg Radio, has endorsed Joe Biden for president. Meantime, U.S. futures are tumbling after yesterday came and went with no firm stimulus plans from the White House. President Trump had promised specifics but did not appear at a briefing on the matter. Economic advisor Larry Kudlow says the president would like payroll tax relief but declined to answer questions on the plan. There are going to be problems ahead. We know there are going to be challenges ahead. Don't deny it. Uh, we'll see. I want to take that a day at a time and a fact at a time, a statistical release at a time. But anyway, this will be the broad package. And at some point in the, in the near future, we will outline a more detailed uh, package for you. And we also heard a bit about the stimulus plan from Vice President Mike Pence. And here with more on that is Bloomberg's Greg Sullivan in Washington. Vice President Mike Pence said that they're working with Congress to see what could get done. The administration is also working to try and make sure that hourly wage earners can stay home if they feel sick without the threat of losing their jobs. U.S. futures fell as the press conference wrapped up. Right now, U.S. futures are down, well, S&P futures are down 1.4 percent. Part of the delay to a stimulus plan could stem from Congress. Henrietta Trace is director of economic policy at Veda Partners. Congress needs to pass legislation to change any tax policy, and that's really what we're running into. I've been speaking with staff, and the answer that I've gotten from leadership in the House is that they're getting calls from members saying, you know, we don't want to be flying right now. We don't want to be coming from our districts back to D.C. We don't want to be in the very populated and crowded halls of Congress. Any legislation will be weeks, if not months away. The House is scheduled to break for recess after tomorrow's session, returning to Washington on March 24th. Meantime, in the U.K., the Bank of England is taking action to stem the fallout from the coronavirus. The central bank issued an emergency rate cut, lowering its benchmark by 50 basis points. We get the very latest from Bloomberg's Laura Cooper in London. This announcement this morning is quite surprising. Just the size, the 50 basis points, is something beyond markets expected. So really, it remains to be seen, will the shock and awe be enough to really mitigate this shock? The rate cut comes just hours before the U.K. government announces its budget, which is expected to include the biggest stimulus measure in decades. For the latest there, we're joined by Bloomberg's Anna Edwards outside of Westminster. Anna, there's lots of infrastructure spending expected, but could it be overshadowed by measures targeting the coronavirus? Good morning, Hugh. Definitely it's going to be overshadowed by the virus. There is going to be a big focus on what can be done there to prepare the UK economy for the uncertainty and for the impact that this is going to have. What level of NHS funding will be provided? What about sick leave for temporary and zero hours workers? Guaranteeing food supplies, bridge financing to businesses, allowing late payment of taxes and help for mortgage payers. All of that very much in focus. So whilst Westminster reels from the revelation that an MP has contracted, it was shadowed to some extent by the virus itself. That's Bloomberg Anna Edwards reporting from Miss Westminster in London. European Central Bank issues its policy decision tomorrow. Bloomberg News has learned the Central Bank is looking at all of its tools to combat the virus. Bloomberg's Ewan Potts joins us now live from London with details. Good morning, Ewan. Good morning, Amy and Karen. A warning from Christine Lagarde. She says without coordinated action, Europe will see, quote, a scenario that will remind many of us of the 2008 great financial crisis. We understand the ECB president made the comments on a call with European Union leaders yesterday. She says policymakers are looking at tools to provide super cheap funding. But she says governments must also ensure banks keep on lending. Live in London, I'm Ewan Potts, Bloomberg Daybreak. Ewan, thank you. S&P futures are lower, down 48 points. Dow futures down 367. Straight ahead, we have the latest world and national news, and this is Bloomberg. 507 on Wall Street. Let's bring in John Tucker with more on what's going on in the world. Good morning, John. Good morning, Amy. After having what he called another good night, Joe Biden reached out to Bernie Sanders and his supporters. I want to thank Bernie Sanders and his supporters for their tireless energy and their passion. We share a common goal, and together, we'll defeat Donald Trump. Bernie Sanders returned to his Burlington, Vermont home before the polls closed yesterday and skipped the traditional primary night address to supporters. There's another round of primaries next week in Florida, Ohio, Illinois, and Arizona, 
And now that could determine whether the race between Biden and Sanders drags on or effectively ends. The two face each other in a debate on Sunday. It'll be the first one-on-one face-off of the campaign, but this time without a live audience due to coronavirus fears. And we'll bring that to you live on Bloomberg Radio. U.S. coronavirus cases have climbed past 1,000. That's according to a Johns Hopkins tally that includes cruise ships. And the head of the CDC, Dr. Robert Redfield, says the fight against coronavirus is shifting now from containment to mitigation. The story from Bloomberg's Ed Baxter. Which he says means more closing of communities, sealed off and canceled public events. But he also says much progress now has been made in testing kits. And I'm happy to say now... With LabCorp and Quest, both operational as of yesterday, there's really uh, laboratory testing availability to any doctor's office that they can go through LabCorp and Quest. HHS Secretary Alex Azar went so far as to say there is a surplus right now and that dissemination is the goal, not supply. In San Francisco, I'm at Baxter Bloomberg Daybreak. The National Guard will be sent to New Rochelle to help close large public gathering spaces. It's an effort to slow down the spread of the coronavirus outbreak in the suburb of New York City. Governor Andrew Cuomo is implementing a containment zone in New Rochelle. March 12th from this Thursday, a two-week uh, period where facilities within that area, schools within that area would be closed for two weeks. We'll go in, we'll clean the schools and assess the situation. And because of disruptions on campuses around the country, the U.S. Department of Education is letting colleges and universities change course schedules to accommodate students who can't meet enrollment requirements or complete internships. Global News 24 hours a day on air. And a quick take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm John Tucker, and this is Bloomberg Amy. All right, thank you, John. It is 5.10 on Wall Street. Time now for the Bloomberg NBC Sports update. Here's John Stashauer. Amy, the Nets are 2-0 and since the surprise in coaching change. Jacques Vaughn for Kenny Atkinson. They pulled off the upset in L.A., 104-102. Of the Lakers, who had won 11 of 12, had just beaten the Bucks and Clippers. Anthony Davis missed what would have been a game-winning three at the end. Knicks had an 18-point second-half lead in Washington. Sure enough, coughed it up. Lost to the Wizards, 122-115. to Bradley Beal, second-leading scorer in the NBA, scored 40. Meanwhile, the NBA Board of Governors met, considering moving some games to cities where there have been no coronavirus cases. Rangers in Dallas beat the Stars 4-2. to two pair of goals for Capo Caco in the 40th of the year. For Mika Zibanejad, seventh straight loss for the fading fast Islanders. 5-4 in a shootout in Vancouver. The Devils were beaten by Pittsburgh 5-2. to two. They are celebrating today in Hempstead, Long Island. And Coburn dribbles off the clock. 19 years of the waiting and there's pride heading to the NCAA tournament. Hofstra wins the CAA as they reverse their fate from a year ago. And this time, up in Northeastern in the championship game. Eric Cohen called it. Westwood won 70-61 the final score. The last Hofstra trip to the NCAAs was 2001. The coach then was Jay Wright. He has since won two national championships at Villanova. Speaking of the Big East, that tourney begins tonight at the Garden. St. John's plays Georgetown. Mac Turney in Atlantic City. First round wins for both Manhattan and Iona. With the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update, I'm John Stashauer. Amy? All right, thank you, John. A Premier League match between Manchester City and Arsenal today has been postponed after the owner of a Greek team that recently played Arsenal contracted the coronavirus. The match delay comes as leagues around the world cope with the outbreak. U.S. leagues have banned outsiders from locker rooms. Some NHL and NBA teams have pushed back against recommendations to keep fans out of stadiums. Checking the futures, S&P futures down one and a half percent. NASDAQ futures down one and a half percent. Dow futures down 1.4 percent. This is Bloomberg Daybreak. Business is constantly evolving. Is your financial printer evolving to keep ahead of the curve? At Command Financial, we are redefining financial printing by providing industry-leading expertise, leveraging technology, and honing processes and best practices. Every day, Command helps SEC registrants, as well as members of their working groups, including securities attorneys and investment bankers, prepare, file, and disseminate regulatory and disclosure documents, such as registration statements, M&A documents, and mutual fund prospectuses and reports. Command provides a full range of services to help you effectively complete your deal, meet your disclosure requirements, and achieve your shareholder communications objectives. Visit our website at commandfinancial.com.
www.ebitcoinsolutions.com and learn how we're evolving, not only with the times, but also with your business requirements. Command Financial, redefining financial printing. Imagine. Imagine being denied an apartment because of your religion or your race or because you have children or a disability. It's so wrong. Yes, but who has the power to stop this? You do. Each of us has the power. The law is on your side. It's illegal for landlords to discriminate because of race, color, religion, sex, national origin, disability, or familial status. If you suspect that you have experienced housing discrimination, file a complaint with HUD immediately so we can investigate it. Fair housing is your right. Use it. To learn more, visit HUD.gov slash fair housing. That's HUD.gov slash fair housing. Or call 1-800-669-9777. 1-800-669-9777. A public service message from HUD in partnership with the National Fair Housing Alliance. This one shouldn't take long. Of course, if it had a cover, I might not be bothered. Can't see what's under there. And they'd have chained the back wheel. Would have taken me much longer, especially if the chain's off the ground. Makes it harder to cut. This one doesn't even have a lock on the front. So, in the time I've been talking to you, I've nicked it. On average, in London, a scooter or motorbike is stolen every hour. Make sure it's not yours. Lock your bike, chain the rear wheel, and cover to make it harder to steal. Lock, chain, cover. The Met Police. On the 24th of March, say hello to Disney+. Plus. Start streaming the most talked about movies, series, and documentaries. From Marvel, plus Star Wars, plus Disney, plus Pixar, plus National Geographic. All in one place. And on the plus side, pre-order now and you can get one year for just $49.99. Visit DisneyPlus.com for more. Offer valid until the 23rd of March. 18 plus subscription required. T's and C's apply. We've all been in one, but how much do you really know about black cabs? For instance, did you know that a black cab has to be tall enough to accommodate an individual wearing a bowler hat? That's a lot of space for you and your briefcase. Or that free now drivers can use the bus lanes, the perfect getaway to make your meeting in time. And with two-minute central London pickups, you needn't waste time searching for a taxi. Just download the free now app today and take the hassle out of getting round London. Matt Letizier, what did you make of that performance today? Well, it really was a game of two halves, to be honest, Jeff. Leicester came out in the first half really, really... Uh, Letiz! What's up, Jeff? Run for it! What the... <laughs> Move over, football! Cheltenham coming through. And Skybatter on the charge. With a roaring first-race special every day of the festival. Skybet. That's betting better. Applies to first bet on the first race at Cheltenham on the main race market only. Place terms apply. Eligibility restrictions. Offers vary each day. Check site for details. T's and C's apply. 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. Conversations from Bloomberg Television. Here's Emily Chang on Bloomberg Technology. Now to discuss further economic impact of the coronavirus, I want to bring in Secretary Carlos Gutierrez from Washington. He is currently the chair of the Albright Stonebridge Group, and prior to that, he served as Commerce Secretary to President George W. Bush and was also the CEO and chair of the multinational food giant Kellogg. What is your reaction to what we know and the statements that the president has made so far about his plan? Well, you know, it's hard to say because we don't know what the plan is, but conceptually, the idea of a stimulus strikes me as solving the wrong problem. I mean, it's a good tactic. It may be a good backstop. But we have a medical problem here, not a monetary or a fiscal or, uh, or anything else. The only solution in front of us is medical. So are we putting enough resources behind finding a vaccine? Uh, do we understand the virus? Have we ordered enough testing kits? So, you know, today we say, well, there are a small number of people who have been affected. Our problem is that we haven't tested many people. In fact, of all the countries that have been impacted by the virus, we're the ones who have done the least testing. Hear more interviews like this one on Bloomberg Television, streaming live on Bloomberg.com and on the Bloomberg mobile app, or check your local cable listings. 
Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow. Another day of reversals in many major markets with U.S. stock index futures falling, the dollar weakening, and Treasury yields dropping as well after surging a day earlier. We check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. S&P futures down 48 points. Dow futures down 369. NASDAQ futures down 133. The DAX in Germany is up 1.9 percent. Ten-year Treasury up 23.30 seconds. Yield 0.73 percent. The yield on the two-year 0.45 percent. Comex crude oil down 1.8 percent or 61 cents at 33.75 a barrel. Comex gold down a tenth of a percent on a dollar 80 to 16.58 60 an ounce. The euro 1.1321 against the dollar. The British pound 1.2935 and the yen is at 105.11. That's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Now here's John Tucker with more on what's going on around the world. John, good morning. Good morning, Karen. Joe Biden has opened an all but insurmountable lead over Bernie Sanders in the race for the Democratic presidential nomination. The former Vice President swept to convincing victories in Missouri, Mississippi, Idaho, and Michigan. The U.S. has shifted into a new phase of its coronavirus response. Authorities are now focusing on limiting damage. And President Trump retweeted a supporter calling coronavirus the China virus, with the president then writing, we need the wall more than ever. Sports, Nets beat the Lakers. The Knicks fall to the Wizards. Celtics beat the Pacers and the Warriors lose to the Clippers. On the ice, Rangers and Bruins win. The Islanders lose in overtime while the Devils fall to the Penguins. Global News, 24 hours a day. On air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm John Tucker, and this is Bloomberg. Amy. All right, thank you, John. It is 519 on Wall Street. This is Bloomberg Daybreak. We're live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studios. Traders still waiting for those details from the Trump administration on an economic stimulus plan. We're joined now by Andrew Sheets, Chief Cross Asset Strategist at Morgan Stanley. I want to thank you for taking the time with us this morning. As you know, the Trump administration promising those details on an economic stimulus yesterday did not deliver. What message did that delay send to investors? Well, I I think it further emphasizes, at least in our view, that investors should be exercising patience here because, you know, I think as you highlight, there are are multiple issues that the market's going to need to confront, both the likely rise of U.S. cases as testing is rolled out, but also I think this question that even if you have economic stimulus, um, even if you say cut payroll taxes, if investors aren't confident, then they might save that money rather than spend it. So what sort of stimulus do you think would be would work, would be effective against the economic impact of the coronavirus? Well, you know, to be honest, I think that the most effective measures may be things that directly affect the public health concerns. I think that is ultimately where um, the, mar- the market's focus is going to be and also might be most impa- impactful to consumer confidence. Because, again, even even if you think about kind of direct transfers, um, either cutting payroll taxes, uh, you know, giving rebates directly to um, uh, directly uh, to citizens, then you, you still have this problem that if people aren't confident enough in the public health response, they might save that. So this is a really hard th- and, and, you know, the other thing I think is important to emphasize is this is a really hard thing to fix with policy. It's hard to fix with lower interest rates. It's hard to fix even with tax cuts or other measures. It's, it's a real, um, it's a significant challenge and we shouldn't kind of lose sight of that. Sounds like you're talking about not just payroll tax cuts and putting money back in people's pockets, but, you know, providing more tests for the general public. Well, and, and I do think that, um, you know, when we think about measures that will be effective, I think we need to step back and think really about what our, our threshold for that is. You know, we've, we've lived in a world, I think, in this market for really the last you know, five or six years where um, policymakers, fiscal policy, monetary policy has kind of been elevated into this kind of almost all-powerful force that can, can, can fix any problem. And, and I think this is a problem that, that can't be quickly addressed by either monetary or, or fiscal policy. And so I think for markets, it's important that we acknowledge that. Obviously, we're going to remain quite volatile as, as these headlines come out. But, you know, in our view, the thing that will probably do the most to, um, to help market confidence, to help consumer confidence, is um, uh, are measures related to public health and the public health response and confidence that the number of cases are peaking more so than any specific uh, package. With that in mind, uh, should we be watching what is then happening in the UK? We just got that uh, 
50 basis point rate cut from the Bank of England a few hours ago. If that is effective, is that something we should be considering? How effective would it be to dampen the virus impact? Well, I think that is very interesting. We did get this surprise rate cut here in the UK uh, this this morning. Uh, I think it is indicative that central banks are are moving quickly to try to do what they can. But again, ultimately, I think what they can do is is limited. Um, I think we see this in the history of emergency interest rate cuts in the U.S. Um, that, that history is is quite mixed, and I think it's understandable why it's mixed because the environments where where a central bank is making an making an emergency rate cut are often quite serious, stressed environments. Usually there is something quite uh, important, uh, quite serious, often quite damaging going on. And and often uh, in the U.S., markets have fallen after the Fed's an, made an emergency rate cut rather than risen. So the Bank of England is, is taking what steps it's can, it can. We think that the U.K. government will increase its spending. Uh, but again, these factors um, you know can be easily overwhelmed in, in certain public health scenarios. It can only dampen the issue. It, it can't um, uh, overturn it. Okay, well, you brought it up, and we only have about a minute here, but I need to get this in. So let's look at the history of this. How would these conditions then compare to what we've seen before past recessions? We've got about a minute. Well, I, I think that it's important to note that bef- even before uh, these events happened, there were signs that um, the economy was late cycle, that, that not all was well, the yields were falling, the yield curve was flattening, defensive assets were outperforming more cyclical ones. So I, I think investors still need to keep that in mind. We're still, we were seeing late cycle signs before, we're still seeing them, and I think that also argues for patience. All right, Andrew Sheets. Andrew, the chief cross-asset strategist at Morgan Stanley. I want to thank you for taking the time with us and breaking that down for us this morning. And we are checking the markets now. Looking at NYMEX crude, it is down 2%. Brent crude down 1.8%. COMEX gold now at 1659.6 per ounce. S&P futures down 1.8%. Dow futures down 1.6%. NASDAQ futures down 1.7%. We continue to watch the impact of the coronavirus virus and the price wars with oil on the markets this morning here on Bloomberg Daybreak. Much more still to come. We're also going to be looking at what's going on with the primary. A big vote last night. Uh, Joe Biden now with what is considered a commanding lead over Senator Bernie Sanders. We're going to look at all of that and more still to come on Bloomberg Daybreak. This is Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Money Minute. More volatility for stocks as the early U.S. indicators fall, pointing to a drop at the open. As investors await White House details on what President Donald Trump said would be major measures to battle the economic impact of the coronavirus. The Bank of England has cut interest rates in an emergency move to keep credit flowing through the economy, saying the outbreak will damage economic activity. Yesterday on Wall Street, stocks rose about 5% in a wild day, regaining some of Monday's route amid optimism about about White House measures aimed at blunting the coronavirus fallout. The Dow was up almost 1,200 points yesterday. McDonald's will offer employees of corporate-owned U.S. restaurants two weeks of pay in the event of a quarantine as the coronavirus outbreak worsens. But the locations account for only about 5% of total U.S. locations, with the rest being franchised. Dow futures down more than 300 points, and crude oil is slumping again this morning, back under $34 a barrel. Gina Cervetti, Bloomberg Radio. Message and data rates may apply. TNC and privacy terms can be found at babble.com slash terms. Please don't text and drive. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then try Babbel for free by texting EXPLORE to 64000. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the spaced repetition method, in just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence. 
With Babbel, you can speak a language. Just text EXPLORE to 64000 and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or text EXPLORE to 64000 and try it for free. Text E-X-P-L-O-R-E to 64000. Vatsal Shah is Senior Project Engineer at Mott McDonald, a global engineering consultancy with more than 16,000 employees. He earned his Ph.D. at New Jersey Institute of Technology and as an adjunct professor is helping NJIT students explore or emerging technologies. My focus is renewable markets, emerging technologies, the idea of floating cities. What are we doing to develop that? What will happen to see in the water? What will happen? Night is still young, but a little late to get into the wrong ride, don't you think? <laughs> That's why I choose Ola. With secure start codes unique to every user, there's no way anyone can ride a car that's meant for you. Good night. Ride the change with Ola. Download and sign up now and get up to £15 vouchers. Terms and conditions apply. Hey, have you heard? The Mayor of London has launched his latest van scrappage scheme to help tackle London's toxic air. Small businesses or sole traders like me with a polluting van could now get £7,000, which you could use to trade up to a Euro 6 vehicle. And you could get an extra £2,500 towards running costs if you go electric. The scheme is now even easier to qualify for, and it's open to any businesses with up to 50 employees, like mine. So, I'm going to search TfL Scrappage to see if I'm eligible and apply. You should do the same. To the Mayor of London and TfL, every journey matters. If you look to your left, you'll see Lincoln Cathedral. And over there, the Belt Town Hall... On the right, what's his name's house? And we just went past a fountain. Um, and if you look to your right, you'll see McDonald's, where they're serving the bacon roll. Talk amongst yourselves. Back in a minute. Give in to the bacon roll from McDonald's. Three rashers of delicious bacon in a soft white roll. <whistles> served until 11am. Participation may vary. Petrol. Or electric. Why choose petrol and electric? Discover the BMW plug-in hybrid and electric range. 14th to the 21st of March. Visit your BMW retailer. Sometimes electric, always BMW. Participating retailers only. The puck drops. 12 players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. Tune in brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on Tune In. The opening of U.S. trading. Let's get you up to date on the news you need to know at this hour. U.S. futures are tumbling after yesterday came and went with no firm stimulus plans from the White House. President Trump had promised specifics but did not appear at a briefing on the matter. Economic advisor Larry Kudlow said the president would like payroll tax relief but declined to answer questions on the plan. There are going to be problems ahead. We know there are going to be challenges ahead. Don't deny it. Uh, we'll see. I want to take that a day at a time and a fact at a time, a statistical release at a time. But anyway, this will be the broad package. And at some point in the, in the uh, near future, we will outline a more detailed uh, package for you. Part of the delay could stem from Congress. A plan for payroll tax relief would need to be approved by lawmakers who break for recess after tomorrow's session. Henrietta Trays is Director of Economic Policy at Veda Partners. I've been speaking with staff, and the answer that I've gotten from leadership in the House is that they're getting calls from members saying, you know, we don't want to be flying right now. We don't want to be in the very populated and crowded halls of Congress. Any legislation will be weeks, if not months away. Meantime, in the UK, the Bank of England is taking action to stem the fallout from the coronavirus. The central bank issued an emergency rate cut, lowering its benchmark by 50 basis points. We get more from Bloomberg FX and rate strategist Richard Jones. It's the aggressiveness of the cut that I think really catches the eye. Going into this, we had about 35 to 40 basis points priced in the market. So this is definitely on the high end of expectation. So it does feel like this is a little bit more reactive than proactive. I think it probably would have been more effective if you'd had central banks acting in concert last week when the Fed moved. 
The European Central Bank issues a policy decision tomorrow. And Bloomberg News has learned the Central Bank is looking at all of its tools to combat the virus. We are told President Christine Lagarde held a conference call with EU leaders yesterday, saying the outbreak risks a shock to the region similar to the... A person familiar with that call says Lagarde will take steps to stem the fallout as soon as tomorrow. Now let's get you up to date on how stocks are faring. We check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. S&P futures are down 46 points. Dow futures down 365. And NASDAQ futures down 129. 10-year treasury up 22.30 seconds. Yield 0.73%. The yield on the two-year 0.44%. NYMEX crude oil is down 70. Authorities are now focusing on limiting damage. We're in a containment in certain areas uh, I would say in general we're in a contained, containment blended mitigation. In some areas we're in high mitigation. Dr. Robert Redfield is head of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. He told the congressional hearing America had lost valuable time tracking the virus. President Trump has summoned some of Wall Street's top executives to the White House to talk about the fallout from the coronavirus outbreak and what the economy needs to make it through the crisis. That story from Bloomberg's Bob Boone. A person with knowledge of the matter says Trump wants insights from the executives into the market and capital liquidity and wants to hear about what types of relief banks will be providing to customers and clients. The invitation list is said to include David Solomon of Goldman Sachs, Charles Scharf of Wells Fargo, Citigroup's Michael Corbett, Bank of America's Brian Moynihan, and J.P. Morgan Chase co-president Gordon Smith as Jamie Dimon recovers from recent surgery. They'll undoubtedly be discussing the payroll tax cut and other financial relief Trump has already floated for businesses and workers. Bob Moon. Bloomberg Daybreak. Officials are clamping down on public gatherings in and coronavirus hotspots, including New Smith, Rochelle. That's Dunn where Dunn Governor Cuomo called in the They'll National Guard to order schools and other large congregate facilities temporarily closed starting Thursday. It is a dramatic action, but it is the largest cluster in the country. And this is literally a matter of uh, life and death. According to Johns Hopkins, the U.S. tally rose above 1,000 infections on Tuesday. Joe Biden has opened a nearly insurmountable lead over Bernie Sanders. It's more than a comeback, in my view, our campaign. It's a comeback for the soul of this nation. Biden addressing supporters after last night's primary wins in Missouri, Mississippi, Idaho, and the biggest prize of the night, Michigan. He now has more than 820 delegates compared to 660 for Bernie Sanders. And Global News 24 Hours in Berg, Amy. All right, thank you, John. It is 5.35 on Wall Street. Time now for the Bloomberg NBC Sports update. Here's John Stash Hour. Amy Moore, sports-related coronavirus news. The Ivy League tournament in Boston canceled, so regular season champ Yale gets the NCAA bid. The Mid-American Conference tourney in Cleveland will be past the Lakers' second loss in their last 13 games. The Nets are 2-0 under new coach Jacques Vaughn. In Washington, Knicks won the second quarter by 21, lost the third by 16, lost the game 122-115. Bradley Beal, 40 points. For the Wizards, Rangers making the push to make the playoffs. A 4-2 win at Dallas, led by a pair of rookies. 19-year-old Capo Caco scored twice, and Igor Shesterkin won in goal. If the season ended now, the Islanders would not be in the playoffs. Seventh straight loss, 5-4 in a shootout at Vancouver. Pittsburgh beat the Devils 5-2. The Hofstra Pride go into the NCAA tournament first time since 2001. Their 26th win of the year was 70-61 over Northeastern in the Colonial Final in D.C. Manhattan and Iona both advanced in the Metro Atlantic. Stony Brook was ousted in America East. With the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update, I'm John Stashower. Amy. All right, thank you, John. It's 537 on Wall Street, and the latest edition of Bloomberg Business Week is on newsstands now with a cover on White House economic advisor Larry Kudlow. Also in this week's issue, whether or not to buy the dip. Suzanne Woolley wrote the story for Bloomberg Business Week. I mean, it all depends on your time horizon, because if you're planning to retire in a couple of years and you really haven't put enough away, you don't want to be having to sell stocks into a downturn. So in that situation, you may want to pull back a bit. You can read more about this and other stories in this week's edition of Bloomberg Business Week on newsstands now. And online at businessweek.com, terminal customers can receive a complimentary subscription at MHE Go. Listen to Business Week with Carol Masser and Jason Kelly right here on Bloomberg Radio and on YouTube weekdays from 2 to 6 p.m. Wall Street time. Get global business, finance, and tech news on your TV, computer, or mobile device. Just visit youtube.com and search Bloomberg Global News. It is 538 on Wall Wall Street. Time now for the Tri-State Business Report. We're joined live by Bloomberg's Joan Doniger. 
Amy Citigroup will start splitting up its thousands of New York-based workers today because of the coronavirus. About half its workforce will be sent to work from home or backup sites. Where workers are sent will depend upon their role. Workers in the trading division will go to a backup site in Rutherford, New Jersey. Half of those handling back office functions for the consumer division will end up working from home. Bank branches will operate as usual. St. Patrick's Day will be a major test of how much the coronavirus will hit the economy. It's one of the biggest revenue generating days of the year for many bars. A managing partner for Broadstone, which is part of the Pig and Whistle group of watering holes, says the virus will hit its bottom line and eventually the group may have to cut back on labor or close some space. It's hoping summer will see an increase in corporate events. And the annual New York Auto Show is being pushed back until late August because of the outbreak. The show was supposed to take place next month. Organizers say the event brings in more than $330 million to the local economy. Organizers wanted to keep the show going after the cancellation of the Geneva International Motor Show last month. With the Tri-State Business Report, I'm Joan Doniger. Amy? Thank you, Joan. It is 539 on Wall Street. Bloomberg Radio is on the air from San Francisco to New York, London to Hong Kong. Let's check in with our global news team for some of the top stories heard on our 300 affiliate radio stations around the world. I'm Courtney Donahoe on KTRH in Houston. Most shale wells are now unprofitable and drillers are scrambling to scale back operations. I'm Steve Podeskin on KNX in Los Angeles. We're talking about Disney's shareholder meeting. I'm Gina Cervetti and on WBBM in Chicago, I'm reporting that McDonald's will offer employees of corporate-owned U.S. restaurants two weeks of pay in the event of a coronavirus-related quarantine. I'm Roger Hearing on Bloomberg DAB Digital Radio in London. We're reporting on the Bank of England's emergency interest rate cut to deal with the virus impact. I'm Tom Busby, and on KMOX in St. Louis, I'll be reporting on Tesla's plans to build a Cybertruck plant in the central U.S., but it won't say where. I'm Joan Doniger telling WOAI listeners in San Antonio how the global collapse in oil prices could threaten booming electricity demand in West Texas. Those are some of the stories our 2,700 Bloomberg journalists and analysts are working on this morning around the world. Checking the markets now. The S&P futures are down 2%. Dow futures down nearly 2%. NASDAQ futures down right at 2%. Much more still to come on Bloomberg Daybreak. This is Bloomberg. Asset managers who seize change to launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new technology to re-engineer the investor experience are often rewarded. However, in an industry paralyzed with complexity, few act with agility or decisively. Few run their business strategically. Yet, the most competitive managers in the market know, with the right partner and a flexible operating platform, you can. Go boldly toward change with SEI Investment Manager Services. Determination and operational strength are both essential factors for growth in asset management. I'm Steve Meyer, President Head of SEI's Investment Manager Services Division. We know that disruptive forces create opportunities around the world. If you see potential and change, our industry specialists will maximize SEI's integrated platform of data and risk management, global investment operations, compliance support, and investor services to position your asset management business for success. Come grow with us. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more at SEIC.com slash seize change. Business is constantly evolving. Is your financial printer evolving to keep ahead of the curve? At Command Financial, we are redefining financial printing by providing industry-leading expertise, leveraging technology, and honing processes and best practices. Every day, Command helps SEC registrants, as well as members of their working groups, including securities attorneys and investment bankers, prepare, file, and disseminate regulatory and disclosure documents, such as registration statements, M&A documents, and mutual fund prospectuses and reports. Command provides a full range of services to help you effectively complete your deal, meet your disclosure requirements, and achieve your shareholder communications objectives. Visit our website at commandfinancial.com and learn how we're evolving, not only with the times, but also with your business requirements. Command Financial, redefining financial printing. This one shouldn't take long. Of course, if it had a cover, I might not be bothered. Can't see what's under there. And then they'd have chained the back wheel. It would have taken me much longer, especially if the chain's off the ground. Makes it harder to cut. This one doesn't even have a lock on the front. So... In the time I've been talking to you, 
I've nicked it. On average, in London, a scooter or motorbike is stolen every hour. Make sure it's not yours. Lock your bike, chain the rear wheel, and cover to make it harder to steal. Lock, chain, cover. The Met Police. A half-price dream holiday. Wouldn't want to miss that. A takeaway for free. Wouldn't want to miss that. And 30 gigs data for just £10 a month on Smarty Mobile. You definitely don't want to miss that. Our Smarty Sim comes packed with 30 gigs of data and unlimited calls and texts for just £10 a month on a one-month plan. That's why Smarty won Best Value Sim Only Network in the U-Switch Mobile Awards 2020. Don't miss out. Search Smarty Mobile. Smarty. Simple. Honest Mobile. Smarty.co.uk Delayed at the dentist and now you're late for school pickup. <sighs> you need a free now. Need to take the dog to the vet before lunch. <coughs> Should have gotten a free now. Trying to get four kids and their baggage to the airport? Free now. Sometimes you can't get from A to B fast enough. Download the Free Now app today for quick pickups and reliable drivers, no matter the situation. Less hassle, more hustle with Free Now. At the Bank of Antandek, they've created Stan, a smart bot that can predict the future of remortgaging. I read Stan. Will my mortgage rate go up? 1955 was the last time Newcastle won the cup. No, I try not to mumble. Playing. Let's get ready to rumble. Oh. Oh. Meanwhile, at Santander, they can't predict your future, but they'll help secure it with great mortgage rates fixed for up to 10 years. See what's possible at Santander. Early repayment charges apply. Lending subject to status and criteria. Your home may be repossessed if you do not keep up repayments on your mortgage. Jim from Nuneaton writes, You were everything I desired. Perfection. I only had eyes for you, but before I really knew it, you were gone, leaving just an empty box behind. I just want you back. Your two juicy patties, crisp lettuce, gherkins, onions, cheese, and my favorite Big Mac sauce. You could now spend even longer with the taste you love with the Grand Big Mac, but only until the 24th of March. <laughs> Served after 11 a.m., subject to availability, participating restaurants only. The moment you realize you've drilled through an electric cable. The moment you realize that doesn't just mean no telly on the wall, but no telly full stop. The moment you realize you've got British Gas Home Care. And not just your electrics, but your plumbing, heating and drains are all covered. So the moment you've got a problem, make it our problem. British Gas, here to solve. Search British Gas Home Care. Bloomberg Radio. Now, a global news update. A big night for former Vice President Joe Biden on Mini Super Tuesday. He won Michigan, Missouri, Mississippi, and Idaho. Votes are still being counted in North Dakota and Washington State. With the numbers all seeming to fall his way, padding his delegate lead, Joe Biden spoke as a candidate does when the other has conceded. And I want to thank Bernie Sanders and his supporters for their tireless energy and their passion. We share a common goal, and together... We'll defeat Donald Trump. Bob Costantini, Cleveland. Sanders did not concede. In fact, he hasn't spoken publicly since the results have come in. Washington Governor Jay Inslee to announce a ban today on gatherings, games, and events of more than 250 people in most of the Seattle metro area. They're trying to stop the spread of the coronavirus. The order will not close businesses or schools. There are now more than 1,000 cases of the virus in the U.S. and at least 31 deaths. I'm Christopher Cruz. Why all the top tier experts? Because business is not a magic trick. Give us a sense of the economic backdrop. Bloomberg Markets. Which financial records are these? Weekday mornings at 10 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow. Another day of reversals in major markets with U.S. stock index futures falling, the dollar weakening, and Treasury yields dropping after surging a day earlier. We check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. S&P futures are down 55 points this morning. Dow futures down 429, and NASDAQ futures down 100. The DAX in Germany is higher, up 1.7%. The 10-year Treasury of 30, 30 seconds yield 0.70%. The yield on the 2-year, 0.43%. 30-year yield, 1.18%. 
Nymex crude oil is down 2.2% or 75 cents at 33.60 a barrel. Comex gold down about a tenth of a percent on a dollar 20 to 16.59 10 an ounce. The euro 1.1308 against the dollar. The yen 105.19. That's a Bloomberg business flash. Now here's John Tucker with more on what's going on around the world. John, good morning. And Karen, no sign yet of the stimulus Donald Trump promised. He didn't appear at a briefing yesterday after saying on Monday he'd announce a big economic package. The United States has 1,001 confirmed cases of coronavirus. That's according to a Johns Hopkins tally, which shows 28 deaths. Japan may be about to announce it's pushing back the holding of the Olympic Games. Infections in Italy top 10,000. The global death toll top 4,200. Joe Biden won many Tuesday, opening an all but unbeatable lead over Bernie Sanders with victories in Missouri, Mississippi, Idaho, and most importantly, Michigan. Sports, the Nets beat the Lakers, the Knicks fall to the Wizards, the Celtics beat the Pacers, and the Warriors lose to the Clippers. And on the ice, the Rangers and Bruins win. The Islanders lose in overtime, while the Devils fall to the Penguins. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and a quick take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm John Tucker, and this is Bloomberg. Bloomberg Opinion, informed perspectives, and expert data-driven commentary on breaking news. It's 5.49 on Wall Street and time to check in now with Bloomberg Opinion. The Bank of England cut those interest rates in its first emergency move since the financial crisis and announced measures to help keep credit flowing through the economy, warning that the coronavirus outbreak would damage growth. We are joined live now by Marcus Ashworth, Bloomberg Opinion Editor in our London Bureau. Marcus, it is a pleasure. Thank you for taking the time. How much of a surprise was this? Well, um, I actually predicted it, so it can't be that much of a surprise, unless I'm a genius. <laughs> um, my story came out at 7 o'clock, and they announced the uh, surprise rate cut at 7 o'clock, so I didn't get much of a lead on it, not even a second, perhaps. Hmm. No, seriously, this was a surprise in a sense, not even a headline writer said it, had a heads up, of the actual rate cut, the size of the rate cut. We were expecting it possibly today, but only 25 uh, maybe, I think it was a consensus with another 25 to come, but they decided, let's get it all done. So this is done ahead of the, the March 26th meeting. But that's, the rate cut's actually not the story here. Mm-hmm. It's the coordination between the government and the central bank and into the banking system. And they have shocked and awed us. This is a massive package. It can release up to £300 billion worth of lending to the system via a combination of targeted stuff to small and medium enterprises. Um, uh, They're pushing the banks to not pay bonuses or dividends, but pass this all through. So it's prudential regulation measures as well. They are easing up uh, guilt borrowing, like similar to what the Fed's done for for U.S. Treasuries, and uh, and they are also, you know, coordinating a a proper uh, longer term and short term measures um, with this rate cut uh, at the same time and a raft of other measures uh, measures across uh, the banking system the uh, incoming deputy uh, incoming governor sat next to the current governor again unprecedented this guy's you know andrew bailey who takes over um next monday um is already fully on board and fully running it and i've never seen any coordination like it and that's the key message here this is a template for the rest of the world how you combine fiscal and monetary policy because we have our big fiscal statement of the year, the budget coming up at uh, 12.30 UK time, where we're expecting up to £600 billion worth of announced infrastructure spending, probably £10 billion worth of short-term and uh, and, more regular measures on spending, tax cuts. This is the bazooka in every sense. You know, I wanted to ask you about that, getting the budget from the UK government today. What are you expecting from that? Well, I mean, as I mentioned, just literally everything. This is a complete 180-degree turn. This is an incumbent for 10 years conservative government, which has been uh, had to do the, the, the nasty austerity measures. That has now changed with this new Boris Johnson government, and we are a real interventionist, uh, proactive, Keynesian-style approach to uh, really boosting the economy through not just this current coronavirus, but obviously more longer term into the, the, the Brexit uh, move away from the European Union. But, you know, they're focusing on the short term here, making sure they've got all the various measures in place to keep the economy going, making sure banks, uh, sorry, corporates and households don't go bankrupt with cash flow measures and the banks are being fully employed. Uh, you know, the Bank of England is essentially using, is acting as a fiscal agent for the government, but it's all joined up thinking, and it's pretty impressive, and it's supposed to, you know, this doesn't work 
literally, I don't think well, but this is effectively a 125 basis point rate cut here. They have a 250 basis point window, they reckon, or, you know, of the lower bound. They've used half of it up today. Interesting point you just made. If this doesn't work, what will? What sort of impact do you see this having on the UK economy? Let's look ahead. Well, I think, um, you know, we just had the GDP numbers, actually, for the okay. last quarter. But, I mean, it's looking back on, on a monthly basis, and it's flat. So it shows you, looking backwards, that the UK economy had a very tough, tough time going to that uh, election and, and the, all the various different nasties we had at the back end of last year with the government. Um, and I think the bank were quite keen to cut at some point. Um, but we obviously are awaiting today's big fiscal measure. But the Bank of England has been brought in to the loop, shown what's going to be happen, and asked to coordinate it. And they've decided to deliver the, the double punch of, uh, or triple punch, you could actually say, of fiscal and monetary action, along with a bunch of short-term measures, which is going to help cash flows. So the economy, look, um, they want to try and avoid it going to recession. And I think they will probably achieve that. Uh, I think that this will be adding a, a further four percentage onto GDP over the course of the next two, three years. But we obviously don't quite know how bad this uh, coronavirus impact really will be. But certainly they put a, a safety net underneath the economy. And then, of course, going forward to the end of this year, we don't quite know how bad the effect will be once the tra transition period ends and we leave the European Union properly. Our thanks to Bloomberg Opinion Editor Marcus Ashworth joining us from our London Bureau. Thank you, Marcus. You can read more on these and other stories from Bloomberg Opinion at Bloomberg.com slash opinion and on the terminal by typing O-P-I-N go. Karen. All right, Amy, thank you. It is 5.54 on Wall Street. It is time now for the Bloomberg Law Report, brought to you by American Arbitration Association. Business disputes are inevitable. Resolve faster with the American Arbitration Association, the global leader in alternative dispute resolution for over 90 years. More at ADR.org. Let's get to the legal stories we're watching this morning from Bloomberg's Jeff Bellinger. The Food and Drug Administration is allowing hundreds of coronavirus patients to be treated with an experimental Ebola treatment developed by Gilead. For now, Facebook has fended off an IRS demand that CEO Mark Zuckerberg and COO Sheryl Sandberg testify in the company's U.S. tax court trial. And RBC Capital Markets is being sued in U.S. District Court by a stockbroker who says she was wrongly fired and denied benefits after she accepted a client's trade order over voicemail. Bloomberg Law. Everything you need, all on one legal research platform, including guidance, analysis, and Bloomberg Bloomberg Market Intelligence. Find out more at BloombergLaw.com. And now another legal story we're watching. The trainer of champion racehorse Maximum Security is one of 27 people charged in an international ring that doped racehorses with performance-enhancing drugs. Federal prosecutors say the drugs could be lethal to horses and cause cardiac issues over exertion, leading to leg fractures, and in some cases, death. For more on the indictment, June Grasso speaks with the Bloomberg legal reporter Chris Domich. Chris, prosecutors say that the trainer of Maximum Security doped nearly every horse in his care in what looks like a pretty elaborate scheme. Tell us about this ring and how it worked. So the, the ring was kind of based around distributing these drugs, which the prosecutors say, you know, would not only allow the racehorses to perform better, but also could lead to health problems and that about 20 horses may have died as a result of this doping. It apparently started with an organized crime task force, and they immediately began identifying trainers who were working with vets and distributors of these drugs to administer them to the racehorses, and they also have them on wiretaps, basically talking about covering up the doping and trying to avoid, you know, administering these drugs when there were monitors around who were looking for racehorses who might have been juiced. So are these performance-enhancing drugs on a list of banned drugs by the FDA? Well, they're certainly not approved by the FDA, and many times, at least in this case, the allegations are that they adulterated some of the drugs, misbranded them to avoid detection, and that sort of thing. Did they say or imply whether they thought this kind of doping of racehorses extends beyond this group? They declined to go beyond the four corners of the indictment, which is, is something that the U.S. attorney in Manhattan often says. But they made it clear that um, they are continuing to investigate doping in the racehorse industry and that there's probably more, more to come. 
And that's Bloomberg legal reporter Chris Dolmich speaking with June Grasso. Catch more of that interview plus analysis of the latest legal news by subscribing to the Bloomberg Law Podcast or downloading the show at Bloomberg.com slash podcasts. And attorneys can find exceptional legal research and business development tools at BloombergLaw.com. S&P future is down about 59 points. Dow futures down 457. And NASDAQ futures down 164. Ten-year Treasury up 28.30 seconds. Yield 0.71%. And Bloomberg Daybreak continues. This is Bloomberg. Influence. Hey, have you heard? The Mayor of London has launched his latest van scrappage scheme to help tackle London's toxic air. Small businesses or sole traders like me with a polluting van could now get £7,000 which you could use to trade up to a Euro 6 vehicle. And you could get an extra £2,500 towards running costs if you go electric. The scheme is now even easier to qualify for, and it's open to any businesses with up to 50 employees, like mine. So, I'm going to search TfL Scrappage to see if I'm eligible and apply. You should do the same. To the Mayor of London and TfL, every journey matters. At the Bank of Antandek, they've created Stan, a smart bot that can predict the future of remortgaging. I read Stan. Will my mortgage rate go up? 1955 was the last time Newcastle won the cup. No, I'm try not to mumble. Playing. Let's get ready to rumble. Oh. Oh. Meanwhile, at Santander, they can't predict your future, but they'll help secure it with great mortgage rates fixed for up to 10 years. See what's possible at Santander. Early repayment charges apply. Lending subject to status and criteria. Your home may be repossessed if you do not keep up repayments on your mortgage. From the financial capital of the world, 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Radio. Live from the Bloomberg Interactive Brokers Studios, this is Bloomberg Daybreak for Wednesday, March 11th, 2020. Coming up this hour. Primary wins in four states give Joe Biden a commanding lead over Bernie Sanders. U.S. futures fall after no firm stimulus plans emerge from the White House. The Bank of England issues an emergency rate cut to stem the fallout from coronavirus. The U.S. has shifted into a new phase of its coronavirus response. I'm John Tucker. The story is straight ahead. I'm John Stash, Hour in sports. Nick blew a big lead. Lost in Washington, Nets upset the Lakers, Rangers won, Islanders and Devils lost, and Hofstra's go into the NCAA. That's all straight ahead on Bloomberg Daybreak. On Bloomberg 1130 New York, Bloomberg 991 Washington, D.C., Bloomberg 1061 Boston, Bloomberg 960 San Francisco, Sirius XM 119, and around the world on BloombergRadio.com and via the Bloomberg Business app. I'm Karen Moscow. And I'm Amy Morris. Bloomberg Daybreak is brought to you by IBKR, the professional's gateway to the world's markets. Their clients enjoy lowest cost access to stocks, options, futures, forex, and fixed income from a single integrated account. Learn more at IBKR.com. It is 6.01 on Wall Street. U.S. futures and Treasury yields falling while the dollar weakens. We check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. S&P futures down 55 points. Dow futures down 430. And NASDAQ futures down 152. The DAX in Germany is down 1.7 percent. So is the CAC in Paris. Ten-year Treasury is up one. The yield 0.70 percent. The yield on the two-year 0.44 percent. NYMEX crude oil is down 3.4 percent. Down a dollar 18 to 33.19 a barrel. Co- Max gold that'll change up 60 cents to 16.60.70 an ounce. The euro 1.1311 against the dollar. The yen 104.97. And this data check brought to you by Witham, a forward thinking technology driven advisory and accounting firm helping clients be in a position of strength in today's modern business landscape. Visit Witham.com to learn more. Amy. Karen, we're going to get to the markets and stimulus plans from the White House in just a moment. But first, we want to start with Joe Biden opening a commanding lead over Bernie Sanders. It's more than a comeback, in my view, our campaign. It's a comeback for the soul of this nation. 
Biden addressed supporters after primary wins in Missouri, Mississippi, Idaho, and the biggest prize of the night, Michigan. Here with more is Kevin Cirilli from our Bloomberg 991 newsroom in Washington. This was a state that President Trump defeated Hillary Clinton in by 0.3 percentage points in the 2016 presidential election. And it's also a state that Senator Bernie Sanders defeated Hillary Clinton in during the 2016 primary race. Joe Biden now has more than 820 delegates compared to 660 for Bernie Sanders. Contests in Washington and North Dakota are too close to call. Meantime, U.S. futures are tumbling after yesterday came and went with no firm stimulus plans from the White House. President Trump had promised specifics but did not appear at a briefing on the matter. Economic advisor Larry Kudlow says the president would like payroll tax relief but declined to answer questions on the plan. There are going to be problems ahead. We know there are going to be challenges ahead. Don't deny it. Uh, We'll see. I want to take that a day at a time and a fact at a time, a statistical release at a time. But anyway, this will be the broad package. And at some point in the, in the near future, we will outline a more detailed uh, package for you. We also heard a bit about the stimulus plan from Vice President Mike Pence. And here with more on that is Bloomberg's Greg Sullivan in Washington. Vice President Mike Pence said that they're working with Congress to see what could get done. The administration is also working to try and make sure that hourly wage earners can stay home if they feel sick without the threat of losing their jobs. And U.S. futures fell as the press conference wrapped up. Right now, S&P futures are down 1.9 percent. Part of the delay to a stimulus plan could stem from Congress. Henrietta Trace is director of economic policy at Veda Partners. Congress needs to pass legislation to change any tax policy, and that's really what we're running into. I've been speaking with staff, and the answer that I've gotten from leadership in the House is that they're getting calls from members saying, you know, we don't want to be flying right now. We don't want to be coming from our districts back to D.C. We don't want to be in the very populated and crowded halls of Congress. Any legislation will be weeks, if not months away. The House is scheduled to break for recess after tomorrow's session, returning to Washington on March 24th. Meantime, in the U.K., the Bank of England is taking action to stem the fallout from the coronavirus. The central bank issued an emergency rate cut, lowering its benchmark by 50 basis points. Governor Mark Kearney speaking to the press just moments ago. Although the magnitude of the economic shock from coronavirus is highly uncertain, activity is likely to weaken materially in the U.K. over the coming months. The rate cut comes just hours before the U.K. government announces its budget, which is expected to include the biggest stimulus measures in decades. For the latest there, we're joined by Bloomberg's Anna Edwards outside of Westminster. And Anna, there's a lot of infrastructure spending expected, but could it be overshadowed by measures targeting the coronavirus? Good morning, Hugh. Definitely it's going to be overshadowed by the virus. There is going to be a big focus on what can be done there to prepare the UK economy for the uncertainty and for the impact that this is going to have. Whilst Westminster reels from the revelation that an MP has contracted uh, coronavirus, it does seem as if this budget will be overshadowed to some extent by the virus itself. Bloomberg's Anna Edwards reporting from Westminster in London. Thanks, Anna. And cases of the virus are rising in the UK as global infections hit 118,000. Turkey has confirmed its first case. Belgium is reporting its first death. And here in the U.S., three TSA workers in California have tested positive for the virus, while cases in America top 1,000. The European Central Bank issues its policy decision tomorrow. Bloomberg News has learned the Central Bank is looking at all of its tools to combat the virus. Bloomberg's Ewan Potts joining us now live from London with details. Good morning, Ewan. Good morning, Amy and Karen. A warning from Christine Lagarde. She says without coordinated action, Europe will see a scenario that will remind many of us of the 2008 great financial crisis. We understand the ECB president made the comments on a call with European Union leaders yesterday. She said that policymakers are looking at tools to provide super cheap funding. But she says governments must also ensure that banks keep on lending. Live in London, I'm Ewan Potts, Bloomberg Daybreak. All right, Ewan, thank you. And this headline crossing the Bloomberg PepsiCo nearing a deal to buy Rockstar Energy Beverages for about $3.9 billion. That according to Dow Jones. S&P futures down about 56 points. Dow futures down 449. NASDAQ futures down 157. The 10-year Treasury up 1 and 132nd yield 0.69%. Straight ahead, we have the latest world and national news. And this is Bloomberg. 
It's 607 on Wall Street. Let's bring in John Tucker now to find out else what else is going on in the world. Good morning, John. And good morning, Amy. U.S. coronavirus cases have climbed past 1,000 with 28 deaths. This is according to a Johns Hopkins tally. And the head of the CDC, Dr. Robert Redfield, says the fight against the coronavirus is now shifting from containment to mitigation. Bloomberg's Ed Baxter has more. Which he says means more closing of communities, sealed off and canceled public events. But he also says much progress now has been made in testing kits. And I'm happy to say now, with LabCorp and Quest both operational as of yesterday, there's really uh, laboratory testing availability to any doctor's office that they can go through LabCorp and Quest. HHS Secretary Alex Azar went so far as to say there is a surplus right now and that dissemination is the goal, not supply. In San Francisco, I'm at Baxter Bloomberg Daybreak. The National Guard will be sent to New Rochelle to help close large public gathering spaces. It's an effort to slow down the spread of coronavirus outbreak in Westchester County. Governor Andrew Cuomo is implementing a containment zone there. March 12th from this Thursday, a two-week uh, period where facilities within that area, schools within that area would be closed for two weeks. We'll go in, we'll clean the schools and assess the situation. New Jersey reported its first death for the new coronavirus, a 69-year-old man from Bergen County. At the annual New York Auto Show, where global car makers plan to unveil 50 new models next month, has been postponed to late August. Because of campus disruptions, the U.S. Department of Education is letting colleges and universities change course schedules to accommodate students who can't meet enrollment requirements or complete internships. On the political front, after having what he called another good night, Joe Biden reached out to Bernie Sanders and his supporters. I want to thank Bernie Sanders and his supporters for their tireless energy and their passion. We share a common goal, and together we'll defeat Donald Trump. Bernie Sanders returned to his Burlington, Vermont home before polls closed Tuesday. He skipped the traditional primary night address to supporters. There's another round of primaries next week in Florida, Ohio, Illinois, and Arizona. And now could determine whether the race between Biden and Sanders drags on or effectively ends. And the final act of Harvey Weinstein's rape trial in New York begins today. Where the once powerful film producer will be sentenced following his landmark Me Too conviction. He faces up to 29 years behind bars. Global News 24 hours a day on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm John Tucker. And this is Bloomberg Amy. All right, thank you, John. It is 6.10 on Wall Street. Time now for the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update. Here's John Stash Hour. Amy, the Nets are 2-0 and since the surprising coaching change. Jacques Vaughn for Kenny Atkinson. They pulled off the upset in L.A. 104-102 over the Lakers, who came in having won 11 of 12. They had just beaten the Bucks and Clippers. Anthony Davis missed what would have been a game-winning three at the end. Knicks had an 18-point second half lead in Washington. Coughed it up. Lost to the Wizards 122-115. Bradley Beal, second-leading scorer in the NBA, scored 40. Rangers and Dallas beat the Stars 4-2. Pair of goals for Capo Caco on the 40th of the year for Mika Zibanejad. He's got 10 goals in his last five games. Seventh straight loss for the fading fast Islanders. Beaten 5-4 in a shootout at Vancouver. The Devils lost to Pittsburgh 5-2. They're celebrating today Hempstead, Long Island. And Coburn dribbles off the clock. 19 years in the waiting and there's pride heading to the NCAA tournament. Hofstra wins the CAA as they reverse their fate from a year ago. And this time, up in Northeastern in the championship game. Gary Cohen called the Westwood one. 70 to 61 was the final. The last Hofstra trip to the NCAAs was 2001. The coach then was Jay Wright, now, of course, at Villanova. And speaking of the Big East, that tourney begins tonight at the Garden. St. John's plays Georgetown. Mac Turney in Atlantic City. First round wins for Manhattan and Iona. The Jaspers beat Fairfield in a game that was tied at halftime. They won by 18, and the Gales down Canisius as E.J. Crawford scored 25. The season over for Stony Brook, beaten by Hartford in America East. With the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update, I'm John Stashower. Amy? All right, thank you, John. And we're checking the markets now. S&P futures down 2%. Dow futures down 1.9%. NASDAQ futures down 2%. NYMEX crude at $33 a barrel. Brent crude at $36 a barrel. This is Bloomberg. 
Message and data rates may apply. TNC and privacy terms can be found at babble.com slash terms. Please don't text and drive. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then try Babbel for free by texting EXPLORE to 64000. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the spaced repetition method, in just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence. With Babbel, you can speak a language. Just text EXPLORE to 64000 and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or text EXPLORE to 64000 and try it for free. Text E-X-P-L-O-R-E to 64000. Hey y'all, Jeff Foxworthy here. Now if you've ever found yourself repeating the same thing over and over for 75 years, you might be... Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. That's why I'm filling in for Smokey to switch things up. Because there's a lot more to say. And I should know because my grandfather was a firefighter. And one of the things he taught me is that the people that love the outdoors the most are often the ones accidentally starting wildfires. Which means always (laughs) B-Y-O-B. No, bring your own bucket to the campfire. And be extra careful with things like burning yard trimmings. Don't just walk away, or chances are you might be starting a wildfire. So for the love of the outdoors, go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Night is still young, but a little late to get into the wrong ride, don't you think? That's why I choose Ola. With secure start codes unique to every user, there's no way anyone can ride a car that's meant for you. Good night. Ride the change with Ola. Download and sign up now. And get up to £15 vouchers. Terms and conditions apply. Hey, have you heard? The Mayor of London has launched his latest van scrappage scheme to help tackle London's toxic air. Small businesses or sole traders like me with a polluting van could now get £7,000, which you could use to trade up to a Euro 6 vehicle. And you could get an extra £2,500 towards running costs if you go electric. The scheme is now even easier to qualify for, and it's open to any businesses with up to 50 employees, like mine. So, I'm going to search TfL Scrappage to see if I'm eligible and apply. You should do the same. To the Mayor of London and TfL. Every journey matters. Harry Bikers here. This message goes out to something very special. Yes, we're talking to you, chicken. Maybe we've been seeing too much of each other. But times have changed, Dave. We've been cheating on meat. Thing is, no stocks make veggie dishes so irresistible that cheating on meat is proper tasty. Our oh, dear chicken, you were the fire in my life, but it's all about you now, aubergine katsu curry. Prepare to be wined and dined, my love. Cheat on meat with no veggie stocks. If you look to your left, you'll see Lincoln Cathedral. And over there, the old town hall. On the right, what's his name's house? And we just went past a fountain. Um, And if you look to your right, you'll see McDonald's, where they're serving the bacon roll. Talk amongst yourselves. Back in a minute. Give in to the bacon roll from McDonald's. Three rashes of delicious bacon in a soft white roll. Served until 11 a.m. Participation may vary. From Bloomberg Television, here's Heidi Stroud Watts. Well, children in Hong Kong have not been to school since January as part of government measures to contain the spread of the coronavirus. The latest return date is April 20th, but that shutdown could still be extended. Let's take a closer look at how this is affecting families and schools with Ruth Benny, who's a founder of education consultancy Top Schools. Ruth is in Hong Kong with us today. Ruth, what's been the experience then of some of your clients and the people that you've spoken to who have been in similar situations? Right. So currently the schools are uh, remaining closed until at least 20th of April. So that would have given us, I think, 13 weeks of no school. 
you know, whether or not the schools will reopen. The Hong Kong University, University of Hong Kong announced yesterday that they will not resume um, in-person classes at all for this academic year. Now, university is different from school, but, but it remains to be seen whether or not that will impact the, the Education Bureau's decision on schools. Uh, we really, really hope not. Yeah, parents are, are, are just, um, anecdotally, parents have um, taken children to, if they have a home country, they've had that option to take them back to the UK, Australia, New Zealand, US, Canada. Um, some, ch- I, mean, I, th- I think the majority of parents, honestly, are, are trying to stick it out, um, but it's really hard going. Hear more interviews like this one on Bloomberg Television, streaming live on Bloomberg.com and on the Bloomberg mobile app, or check your local cable listings. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow. Another day of reversals in many major markets with U.S. stock index futures declining. The dollar weakening and Treasury yields falling after surging a day earlier. We check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. S&P futures down 53 points. Dow futures down 420. NASDAQ futures down 147. The DAX in Germany is up 1.8 percent. Ten-year Treasury up 1 and 132nd. The yield 0.69 percent. Yield on the two-year 0.44 percent. NYMEX crude oil is down 2.8 percent or 97 cents at 33.39 a barrel. Comex gold is up a tenth of a percent, up two dollars to 16.62.30 an ounce. The euro 1.1318 against the dollar. The yen is at 104.95. That's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Now here's John Tucker with more on what's going on around the world. John. And good morning, Karen. No sign yet of the stimulus Donald Trump promised. He didn't appear at a briefing yesterday after saying on Monday he'd announce a big economic package. The U.S. has 1,001 confirmed coronavirus cases according to a Johns Hopkins tally which shows 28 deaths. Japan may be about to announce it's pushing back the Olympic Games. Infections in Italy top 10,000 and the global death toll top 4,200. Joe Biden won mini Tuesday opening an all but unbeatable lead over Bernie Sanders with victories in Missouri, Mississippi, Idaho and most importantly Michigan. In sports, the Nets beat the Lakers, the Knicks fall to the Wizards, the Celtics beat the Pacers and the Warriors lose to the Clippers. And on the ice, the Rangers and Bruins win. The Islanders lose in overtime, while the Devils fall to the Penguins. Global News 24 hours a day, on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm John Tucker. This is Bloomberg. Amy. All right. Thank you, John. And it is 619 on Wall Street. This is Bloomberg Daybreak. We're live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studios. U.S. equity futures retreated after the president did not appear at a briefing yesterday, which the president had promised would provide details about an upcoming economic stimulus did not deliver we're joined now by mike wilson the chief u.s equity strategist at morgan stanley and uh, mike first of all thank you for taking the time we didn't see the details that the trump administration had promised yesterday what sort of message do you think that sent to investors well, I don't think it sent any message, and that's sort of the problem is that uh, the markets were ready for something, and, and now we have to wait. And uh, I don't think it's, you know, that's the end of the world, by the way. I mean, and clearly, it looks like they're probably working on some kind of package. These things take a little bit of time uh, to work themselves out, and my guess is we probably will get something. The, the bigger question is, will it matter, uh, given all of the shocks that we've had, and and will this, you know, prevent the inevitable end of the expansion that we've you know kind of been waiting for for a while now and the markets by the way have been anticipating i think you know one of the one of the things that has been lost in the last year is how defensively oriented you know stock markets and bond markets and and even commodity markets have been trading the whole time in the background and uh, now the question is you know the combination of the coronavirus and of course the oil price war which I think is maybe more important uh, because of the impact it has on credit markets, is that enough to just sort of push us over and we'll just have a mild recession? And I don't, and you know, I think that's what the market is struggling with here. And I, don't, I think that's right. And so we're going to continue to be volatile. Uh, the market's going to continue to try and probe for uh, low points uh, at, at a stock level as well as at the index level. And this is going to take some time. Well, with that kind of volatility in the markets, where could it go from here? Is this a buying opportunity? We think it's absolutely a buying opportunity. This is what we've been waiting for, uh, kind of a finishing move to a 
really what's been a two year consolidation that began back in 2018. Okay, so if you if you objectively look at what markets have been doing, as I said before, you know all we've done is gone nowhere for two years, uh, and most major averages. Some averages are down. Uh, you know the, the weaker averages and some of the smaller uh, sized companies. So we're we're closer to the end than the beginning, right? We're in the eighth inning of this correction that's been going on for two years. And if, if you take that tack, then and you understand that the markets have been thinking about this the whole time, this is absolutely going to be a buying opportunity, and it is right now. I think for many stocks that are down as much as sixty, seventy, eighty percent from their highs, I mean, of course, unless they're going out of business, this is a buying opportunity. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to figure out. Uh, exactly, you know, where are the best opportunities? Look, we're fully invested. We've been fully invested throughout this whole period uh, because, you know, we think this is a cyclical bear market in the construct of a secular bull market. If that comes with a recession, so be it. Uh, we don't think it's going to turn into a financial crisis. And so we've written about this pretty extensively. We think there could be a little bit further downside here, call it another 5 to 10% for the major averages. That's really not that big a deal in the con- context of a, of a longer-term structural bull market. Okay, so then what parts of the market do look attractive to you? The most attractive areas are some of the areas that, <clears throat> of course, people don't want to touch, which is the cyclical parts of the market, right? Things like banks, things like perhaps energy, although I think you've got to be patient there. You know, materials, uh, industrial stocks, uh, and, you know, in the areas that are not yet fully priced for kind of the final move are growth stocks that people have been hiding out in and some of the defensive areas uh, because of the fall in yields. Uh, and we've been we've been positioned in the defensive parts, high quality parts of the market. But to be honest, I mean, it's getting a little frothy uh, as people now it becomes obvious to everyone kind of where we are in the economic cycle. So then what are you watching for over the weeks and months to come? Do you see any recession warning signs? We've got about a minute here. Yeah, the recession signs are everywhere. Okay, so we've been focused on uh, 10-year Treasury yields for the most part. Um, we thought yields would go lower this year, but we had no idea they would get as low as they are. So that, that's a clear sign that, you know, the bond market's already there. Uh, commodity prices, same thing. And then, the, and then the dollar, which I would say constructively now is finally weakening. A okay, very strong dollar, which we've had over the last couple of years, is a headwind for global growth. And that weakening is part of the bottoming process. So the combination of those three things, uh, in fact, it looks like rates and uh, and the dollar may have already turned. Uh, that is very constructive, uh, in my view. And so that is the step one. Those two things have to reverse, uh, importantly, and then of course commodities have to bottom out. And then that will be the sign the market is fully priced for a recession of some kind, whether it's mild or more severe. And that will be the, the key buy point for these more cyclical assets. All right. Thank you, Mike, for taking the time with us. Mike Wilson is the chief U.S. equity strategist at Morgan Stanley. So let's check the markets now. The S&P now down a little more than 2%. Dow down 1.81%. NASDAQ futures down 1.91%. Checking NYMEX crude now trading at 33.26 a barrel. Brent crude at 36 now, $36 per barrel. Much more still to come on Bloomberg Daybreak as we continue to watch the markets and the futures. You are listening to Bloomberg Radio this. Is Bloomberg Daybreak. This is a Bloomberg Money Minute. Another reversal for U.S. stocks as futures drop after Tuesday came and went without specifics from the White House on measures to stem the economic fallout from the coronavirus. Dow futures down more than 400 points. Investors were optimistic about such measures yesterday, and we saw stocks rising about 5%. Wall Street investors are proposing a variety of ways to help ease the economic pain brought on by the coronavirus outbreak. One J.P. Morgan strategist says corporate stimulus and support for workers could shorten the duration of the economic fallout. A UBS officer says public health officials should put emergency funding toward vaccine development. And at BlackRock, an executive recommends generous sick pay and enhanced government welfare programs. Adidas says the coronavirus will cut first quarter profits in China by about a half billion dollars. German rival Puma said it no longer expects any recovery in the short term. Gina Cervetti, Bloomberg Radio. 
asset managers who seize change to launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new technology to re-engineer the investor experience are often rewarded. However, in an industry paralyzed with complexity, few act with agility or decisively. Few run their businesses strategically, yet the most competitive managers in the market know with the right partner and a flexible operating system, you can. Go boldly toward change with SEI Investment Manager Services. Determination and operational strength are both essential factors for growth in asset management. I'm Steve Meyer, President and Head of SEI's Investment Manager Services Division. We know that disruptive forces create opportunities around the world. If you see potential and change, our industry specialists will maximize SEI's integrated platform of data and risk management, global investment operations, compliance support, and investor services to position your asset management business for success. Come grow with us. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more at SEIC.com slash delayed at the dentist and now you're late for school pickup. You need a free now. Need to take the dog to the vet before lunch. Should have gotten a free now. Trying to get four kids and their baggage to the airport. Free now. Sometimes you can't get from A to B fast enough. Download the Free Now app today for quick pickups and reliable drivers, no matter the situation. Less hassle, more hustle with Free Now. Hey, have you heard? The Mayor of London has launched his latest van scrappage scheme to help tackle London's toxic air. Small businesses or sole traders like me with a polluting van could now get £7,000, which you could use to trade up to a Euro 6 vehicle. And you could get an extra £2,500 towards running costs if you go electric. The scheme is now even easier to qualify for, and it's open to any businesses with up to 50 employees, like mine. So, I'm going to search TfL Scrappage to see if I'm eligible and apply. You should do the same. To the Mayor of London and TfL, every journey matters. This ad is made from 100% recycled commercials. Just like Smart Waters, all new bottles are made from 100% recycled plastic. What's that number again? 100%. Every Smart Water bottle is made using recycled plastic. And because it's still 100% recyclable, the plastic will be used again and again. Smart Water, now in a 100% recycled plastic bottle. Label and cap 100% recyclable, but not made from recycled plastic yet. We're working on it. Matt Letizia, what did you make of that performance today? Well, it really was a game of two halves, to be honest, Jeff. Leicester came out in the first half really, really... Uh, Letiz. What's up, Jeff? Run for it! What the... <laughs> Move over, football. Cheltenham coming through. And Skybatter on the charge. With a roaring first race special every day of the festival. Skybet. That's betting better. Applies to first bet on the first race at Cheltenham on the main race market only. Place terms apply. Eligibility restrictions. Offers vary each day. Check site for details. T's and C's apply. 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. Harry Bikers here. This message goes out to something very special. Yes, we're talking to you, chicken. Maybe we've been seeing too much of each other. But times have changed, Dave. We've been cheating on meat. Thing is, no stocks make veggie dishes so irresistible that cheating on meat is proper tasty. Our dear chicken, you were the fire in my life, but it's all about you now, aubergine katsu curry. Prepare to be wined and dined, my love. Cheat on meat with no veggie stocks. If you look to your left, you'll see Lincoln Cathedral. And over there, the old town hall. On the right, what's his name's house? And we just went past a fountain. Um, and if you look to your right, you'll see McDonald's, where they're serving the bacon roll. Talk amongst yourselves. Back in a minute. Give in to the bacon roll from McDonald's. Three rashes of delicious bacon in a soft white roll. Served until 11 a.m. Participation may vary. And went with no firm stimulus plans from the White House. President Trump had promised specifics but did not appear at a briefing on the matter. Economic advisor Larry Kudlow said the president would like payroll tax relief but declined to answer questions on the plan. There are going to be problems ahead. We know there are going to be challenges ahead. Don't deny it. Uh, we'll see. I want to take that a day at a time and a fact at a time, a statistical release at a time. But anyway, this will be the broad package. And at some point... In the, in the near future, we will outline a more detailed uh, package for you. 
Part of the delay could stem from Congress. A plan for payroll tax relief would need to be approved by lawmakers who break for recess after tomorrow's session. Henrietta Trace is director of economic policy at Veda Partners. I've been speaking with staff, and the answer that I've gotten from leadership in the House is that they're getting calls from members saying, you know, we don't want to be flying right now. We don't want to be in the very populated and crowded halls of Congress. Any legislation will be weeks, if not months away. Meantime, in the U.K., the Bank of England is taking action to stem the fallout from the coronavirus. The central bank issued an emergency rate cut, lowering its benchmark by 50 basis points. We get more from Bloomberg FX and rate strategist Richard Jones. It's the aggressiveness of the cut that I think really catches the eye. Going into this, we had about 35 to 40 basis points priced in the market. So this is definitely on the high end of expectation. So it does feel like this is a little bit more reactive than proactive. I think it probably would have been more effective if you'd had central banks acting in concert last week when the Fed moved. And the European Central Bank issues a policy decision tomorrow, and Bloomberg News has learned the central bank is looking at all of its tools to combat the virus. We're told President Christine Lagarde held the news held a conference call with EU leaders yesterday, saying the outbreak risks a shock to the region similar to the financial crisis. A person familiar with the call said Lagarde will take steps to stem the fallout as soon as tomorrow. Right now, S&P futures are down 65 points, Dow futures down 510, and NASDAQ futures down 177. The DAX in Germany is up one and a quarter percent. CAC in Paris up 1.1 percent. And the FTSE 100 up half percent. Ten-year Treasury up one. The yield 0.69 percent. The yield on the two-year, 0.44 percent. And the 30-year yield, 1.17 percent. NYMEX crude oil is down 2.7 percent on 94 cents at 33.42 a barrel. And COMEX gold is up about a tenth of a percent, up a dollar twenty to 16.61.60 an ounce. Straight ahead, we have the latest world and national news. And this is Bloomberg. 633 on Wall Street. This news update is brought to you by Land Rover, the Own the Adventure sales event happening now until March 31st. Visit your tri-state area Land Rover retailer for details on the new Discovery Sport. Land Rover, above and beyond, want to bring in John Tucker to tell us what else is going on in the world, John. And good morning, Amy. The U.S. has shifted into a new phase of its coronavirus response after efforts to stamp out sparks of an outbreak have failed. Authorities are now focusing on limiting damage. We're in a containment in certain areas. Uh, I would say in general we're in a contained, containment blended mitigation. In some areas we're in high mitigation. Dr. Robert Redfield is head of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. He told the congressional hearing America had lost valuable time tracking the virus. President Trump has summoned some of Wall Street's top executives to the White House to talk about the fallout from the coronavirus outbreak and what the economy needs to make it through the crisis. That story from Bloomberg's Bob Moon. A person with knowledge of the matter says Trump wants insights from the executives into the market and capital liquidity and wants to hear about what types of relief banks will be providing to customers and clients. The invitation list is said to include David Solomon of Goldman Sachs, Charles Scharf of Wells Fargo, Citigroup's Michael Corbett, Bank of America's Brian Moynihan, and J.P. Morgan Chase co-president Gordon Smith as Jamie Dimon recovers from recent surgery. They'll undoubtedly be discussing the payroll tax cut and other financial relief Trump has already floated for businesses and workers. Bob Moon. Bloomberg Daybreak. Officials are clamping down on public gatherings in coronavirus hotspots, including New Rochelle. That's where Governor Cuomo called in the National Guard, ordered schools and other large congregate facilities temporarily closed starting tomorrow. It is a dramatic action, but it is the largest cluster in the country. And this is literally a matter of uh, life and death. According to Johns Hopkins, the U.S. tally has risen above 1,000 infections. On the political front, Joe Biden has opened a nearly insurmountable lead over Bernie Sanders. It's more than a comeback, in my view, our campaign. It's a comeback for the soul of this nation. Biden addressing supporters after last night's primary wins in Missouri, Mississippi, Idaho, and the biggest prize of the night, Michigan. He now has more than 820 delegates compared to 660 for Bernie Sanders. When Biden and Sanders debate in Phoenix on Sunday, there will be no audience and no media on site covering it. The DNC and debate sponsor CNN say because of coronavirus worries, an audience won't be in the room and the press filing center won't be open to the media. Global News 24 hours a day on air and on quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm John Tucker. This is Bloomberg Amy.
Thank you, John. It is 636 on Wall Street. Time now for the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update brought to you by BMW. Test drive a BMW at your Tri-State BMW Center and receive exceptional offers on a new BMW. Visit them at TriStateBMW.com. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Here's John Stashauer. Amy Moore, sports-related coronavirus news. The Ivy League tournament in Boston canceled. So regular season champ Yale gets the NCAA bid. The Mid-American Conference tourney in Cleveland will be played without fans. The NBA considering moving games to cities where there have been no cases. All the locals played last night in L.A. The Nets were up two on the Lakers at the end. Gets it into LeBron up top. Chandler on him. Goes right around him. In the lane. Kick it to the wing. Davis a three for the win. No good. And the Nets hang on and beat the Lakers here in Los Angeles. Nets radio. The Anthony Davis miss. Giving Brooklyn the 104-102 upset victory. The backcourt of Spencer Dinwiddie and Karis LeVert team for 45 points. Davis and LeBron James combined for 55. It's just the Lakers' second loss in their last 13 games. The Nets are 2-0 under new coach Jacques Vaughn. In Washington, Knicks won the second quarter by 21, promptly lost the third by 16, and lost the game 122-115. Bradley Beal, 40 points for the Wizards. Rangers pushing to make the playoffs. They won 4-2 at Dallas, led by a pair of rookies. 19-year-old Capo Caco scored twice, and Igor Shesterkin won in goal. If the season ended now, the Islanders would not make the playoffs. Their seventh loss in a row, 5-4 in a shootout at Vancouver. Pittsburgh beat the Devils. 5-2. to two. The Hofstra Pride going to the NCAA tournament first time since 2001. Their 26th win of the year was 70-61 to 61 over Northeastern in the Colonial Final in D.C. Manhattan and Iona both advanced at the Metro Atlantic Tourney. Stony Brook ousted in America East. With the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update, I'm John Stashauer. Amy? All right, thank you, John. It is 637 on Wall Street. The following commentary is from Bloomberg Opinion. Movie theaters can't afford a pandemic. I'm Tara LaChapelle, a columnist for Bloomberg Opinion. The close quarters of a movie theater auditorium are among the last places anyone would want to be during a pandemic. Already, Hollywood studios are beginning to postpone film releases, so don't be surprised if U.S. cinemas temporarily shut their doors. Even if they don't, they'll likely see a big slowdown in attendance anyway. The U.S. box office was already facing a tough year, amid fewer blockbusters and competition from new streaming video apps. AMC, Cineworld, and Cinemark together operate about 20,000 screens around the U.S., and they're already grappling with debt from recent acquisitions and costly theater renovations. So any disruption caused by the coronavirus outbreak couldn't come at a worse time for the industry. I'm Tara LaChapelle. For more Bloomberg Opinion, please go to Bloomberg.com slash opinion or OPIN Go on the Bloomberg Terminal. This has been Bloomberg Opinion. Bloomberg Opinion commentaries can be heard every weekday at this time. Terminal customers can read more at OPIN Go. Coming up on the economic front, we get data on inflation today. Economists predict a flat reading for February's consumer price index. Here with more is Bloomberg's Vinny Del Judice. In January, the CPI rose 0.1%, the smallest increase in September. Today's February data will probably be an energy story. Falling petroleum prices keeping a lid on the head. Headline. Looking ahead, the intensifying coronavirus outbreak could fuel inflation. Bloomberg Economics points to rising demand for medical and personal care products and potential shortages. There's little reason for retailers to offer discounts. On the opposite end of the scale, the outbreak could weigh on services like we're now seeing with travel. Vinny Dow, Judice Bloomberg Daybreak. Thank you, Vinny. And some other stories we are following at this hour. Pepsi is nearing a deal to buy Rockstar Energy Beverages. That's according to the Wall Street Journal, which says Pepsi will pay $3.8 billion for Rockstar. An official announcement on the deal could come as soon as today. U.S. airlines outlining deep cuts to their flight schedules as the coronavirus provokes an industry crisis that could be worse than the aftermath of 9-11. Delta and American Airlines withdrew their profit forecasts and will reduce domestic and international flying. United says it is running stress tests for a potentially dire scenario where revenue would plunge 70 percent in April and May. And Adidas says the coronavirus will cut its first quarter profit in China by about a half billion dollars. The German sportswear maker also says it cannot estimate the full year impact of the outbreak. Adidas says sales in China slumped 80 percent last month, but stores and warehouses are gradually reopening. Wall Street futures are lower, S&P down 2.1 percent. This is Bloomberg. 
Why do hedge funds and other alternative managers rely on Pershing for a highly personalized experience? Mark Alderati, a managing director at BNY Mellon's Pershing and head of Prime Services, explains. In today's fast-paced environment, where the only constants are change and volatility, you need a prime broker who's both steady and agile, focused on supporting your needs so that you can focus on growing your business and producing results. Exceptional client service and advocating for our clients is at the core of what we do. Our award-winning high-touch team is just one of the benefits of working with BNY Mellon. We help alternative investment managers create great experiences for their clients. Whether it's customized financing, securities lending solutions, platform access, or outsourced trading, BNY Mellon's Pershing is a prime broker who's committed to this business and dedicated to meeting your evolving demands. To learn more about the unique and industry-leading solutions for hedge funds and other alternative managers, visit Pershing.com. Pershing LLC. Member FINRA, NYSE. SIPIC. Message and data rates may apply. TNC and privacy terms can be found at bevel.com slash terms. Please don't text and drive. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then try Babbel for free by texting EXPLORE to 64000. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the spaced repetition method, in just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence. With Babbel, you can speak a language. Just text EXPLORE to 64000 and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or text EXPLORE to 64000 and try it for free. Text E-X-P-L-O-R-E to 64000. This is a Bloomberg Pursuits look at luxury. Italy's on lockdown. Ireland has canceled its St. Patrick's Day parades and there's pressure from the NBA to have its teams play games without fans in the room. In short, coronavirus continues to upend everyday life and the portfolios of the world's wealthiest. For example, oil magnates Harold Hamm and Jeff Hillenbrand fell off the 500-member Bloomberg Billionaires Index. All told, the world's 500 richest people lost a combined 230... This one shouldn't take long. Of course, if it had a cover, I might not be bothered. Can't see what's under there. And then they'd have chained the back wheel. It would have taken me much longer, especially if the chain's off the ground. Makes it harder to cut. This one doesn't even have a lock on the front. So, in the time I've been talking to you, I've nicked it. On average, in London, a scooter or motorbike is stolen every hour. Make sure it's not yours. Lock your bike, chain the rear wheel, and cover to make it harder to steal. Lock, chain, cover. The Met Police. We've all been in one, but how much do you really know about black cabs? For instance, did you know that a black cab has to be tall enough to accommodate an individual wearing a bowler hat? That's a lot of space for you and your briefcase. Or that free now drivers can use the bus lanes. The perfect getaway to make your meeting in time. And with two-minute central London pickups, you needn't waste time searching for a taxi. Just download the free now app today and take the hassle out of getting round London. Yeah, so I want to upgrade to, like, the latest phone you got. Okay. <laughs> All right. But, like, for an unbelievably good price. Yeah. Yeah. And I want it where I could choose the length for my own contract. Yeah. On O2, you're our headline act, which is why you can get the phone you want for less per month with a custom plan on O2. Minimum upfront cost, direct only, device plan of three to 36 months, refresh credit by Telefonica UK Limited, term supply. Take the next left, take a right, and you've arrived at your Vauxhall retailer, where you'll find the all-new Vauxhall Corsa. Test drive now and you can take advantage of a £500 deposit contribution with 4.9% APR representative. Book your test drive of the all-new Corsa now. Vauxhall. New rules Britannia. £500 allowance provided as deposit contribution on qualifying new Vauxhalls. Conditional sale and personal contract purchase only. Subject to status, T's and C's, 18 plus Vauxhall Finance. Registered by 2nd of April 2020. Search Vauxhall Test Drive. Connecting decision makers to a network of news and financial information 24 hours a day. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. This is Bloomberg Radio. Now, a global news update. 
big night for Joe Biden, winning four out of six states in yesterday's voting with two states not called yet. Biden with a major win in delegate-rich Michigan, also taking Missouri, Mississippi, and Idaho, Washington State, and North Dakota not called yet. Biden seeming to pivot away from the race in his speech, talking about unity within the Democratic Party and the nation. Winning means uniting America, not sowing more division and anger. It means having a president who not only knows how to fight, but knows how to heal. Bernie Sanders did not appear in public after the polls closed. Russian President Vladimir Putin will be allowed to run for two more six-year terms thanks to action this morning in the Russian Duma, changing the constitution for the 67-year-old who has already ruled Russia for over two decades. Governor Jay Inslee is expected to announce a ban on large events in Washington state. That includes sports in virtually the entire Seattle metro area. Stock futures plummeting again overnight after yesterday's bounce back. I'm Michael Toscano. Why all the top-tier experts? Because business is not a magic trick. Give us a sense of the economic backdrop. Bloomberg Markets. Which financial records are these? Weekday mornings at 10 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow. It is 647 on Wall Street. Futures are lower this morning. Let's go to the first word breaking news desk for today's morning call. Here's Bill Maloney. Bill, good morning. And good morning, Karen. Like you said, U.S. futures are under pressure today after yesterday's surge with Dow futures down 443 points. SPs drop 53 and NASDAQ futures are down 145. The U.S. 10-year yield at 0.71%. Gold is trading higher by 14. Oil is down. And Japan fell 2.3% overnight. European markets are trading higher this morning, led by 1.4% gains in France. Note that Italy pledged $28 billion in measures against the virus, and the BOE cut rates. Back in the U.S. on the economic front at 8.30, the U.S. Consumer Price Index, and at 2 o'clock, the monthly budget statement. In other news, Adidas forecast that the the virus will cut Q1 profit in China by about half a billion dollars. And in deal news, the Wall Street Journal reported that Pepsi is near a deal to buy Rockstar Energy for $3.85 billion. Wrapping things up, AutoNation was raised to neutral at J.P. Morgan, while Air Products raised to overweight over at Wells Fargo. Live from the first of breaking news desk, I'm Bill Maloney. Karen? All right, Bill, thank you to hear live breaking news of your Bloomberg type. Squawk on your terminal, S-Q-U-A-W-K. That's a Bloomberg business flash. Now here's John Tucker with more on what's going on around the world. John. Good morning, Karen. Joe Biden has opened an all but insurmountable lead over Bernie Sanders in the race for the Democratic presidential nomination. The former vice president swept to convincing victories in Missouri, Mississippi, Idaho, and most importantly, Michigan. The U.S. has shifted into a new phase of its coronavirus response. Authorities are now focusing on limiting the damage. President Trump Trump retweeted a supporter calling coronavirus the China virus, with the president then writing, we need the wall more than ever. Sports, the Nets beat the Lakers, the Knicks fall to the Wizards, the Celtics beat the Pacers, the Warriors lose to the Clippers. And on the ice, the Rangers and Bruins win, the Islanders lose in overtime, while the Devils fall to the Penguins. Global News 24 hours a day, on air and on quick take by Bloomberg. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries, I'm John Tucker, and this this is Bloomberg. Amy. All right. Thank you, John. And we are live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio. It is 650 on Wall Street. We're going to check on what is happening now in Washington, D.C. Some of the top stories in our nation's capital include Joe Biden opening an all but insurmountable lead over Bernie Sanders in the race for the Democratic presidential nomination. Also, investors still waiting for those details from the Trump administration on planned stimulus measures to counter the coronavirus impact. Now we're starting to see the impact from the coronavirus on the Democratic primary race as both Biden and Sanders have canceled rallies in Ohio. There's a lot to unpack here. Joining us now to talk about this and more, Brown University Political Science Chair Wendy Schiller. Wendy, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Amy. Want to start with last night's primary, Joe Biden winning Michigan. Uh, It's huge. Is that the final blow then to the Sanders campaign? 
No, I mean, I think we've seen anything can happen. I mean, I don't think the momentum will shift necessarily, but we're going to see probably a decline in turnout for next week's primaries due to the coronavirus. And you just don't know who, in terms of inspiration, enthusiasm, is going to get out the door. You know, it could be that Biden's lead starts to shrink. We don't know. And the problem with the Democratic Party is that these are mobilization efforts, not just for the primary, but for the general election. If you vote in the primary, you're much more likely to vote in the general. So if you have a decline in turnout because of the virus, that may hamper the Democrats come the general election against Trump, no matter whether it's Sanders or Biden. I think there's other things that are really starting to show in terms of the electoral system and the election in November from these particularly important Midwestern primaries. Yeah, there's a lot that can happen between now and November, whether you're talking about the virus or some other X factor we haven't factored in. But is it telling then that Biden also won Mississippi, Missouri, Idaho and Michigan, and we still don't have results from Washington and North Dakota because it's too close to call? Yeah, I mean, the, the thing about Biden is that he's getting the kinds of votes that the Democrats need, uh, not only to win the nomination, but to win the general. So he's getting suburban voters, particularly suburban women, in much bigger numbers than Hillary Clinton. And he's getting some of those white men back, particularly in Michigan, that Hillary Clinton did not get vis-a-vis -vis Bernie and Trump. So if you can actually forge that coalition and keep it going, that is going to be the key ingredient, I think, to winning in November. There's a debate Sunday night. We're going to be carrying it live here on Bloomberg Radio. What are you going to be watching for? I mean, watching for Bernie Sanders. You know, is he going to decide that he wants to really go after Biden and give Trump ammunition the way that he did with Hillary Clinton in 2016? Or is he going to basically try to make the case that his issues, what he wants to do, health care for all, for example, you know, student loan forgiveness and uh, lots of other social programs, if he can get that into the debate and get Biden to commit to some of that, it will be easier for Bernie Sanders to endorse Biden down the road. If Biden plays attention and gives some, you know, uh, support for Bernie's ideas, then maybe you can get some of those Bernie voters to come out in November and not be totally alienated because that's the Achilles heel of the Biden victory, alienating those Bernie Sanders voters. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that because it is not likely that Sanders would be dropping out before the debate or even before the next round of primaries. Wondering what his campaign should do next, push forward, try to overcome or rally behind Biden or maybe behind the scenes work something out where Sanders can save face. Some of his uh, agenda can get into the Biden platform and that way they can show a united front. I mean, which way could this go? Well, Amy, you're talking about a dream scenario for the Democratic Party. If only that were true, if only that would happen. I mean, that's the thing. I think Bernie will push Biden really hard in the debate, and he will try to get him to commit, exactly as you're suggesting, to some of Bernie's ideas. And then if Bernie doesn't do well next week, then Bernie can walk away to supporters and say, listen, we can get some of what we need if Biden wins. Also, Bernie may be looking for a potential cabinet post if, if, big if, the Democrats win and Biden's at the head of the ticket. Will you know, He's not going to get VP, but will get a cabinet post because if you look at bernie's sort of future career he wants to make some of this stuff happen and it's not going to happen in the senate so i think he's going to have to start looking down the road for himself but also his supporters and as we do approach the next set of primaries both biden and sanders canceling those rallies in cleveland ohio because of the coronavirus and some concerns there does that send a message to voters uh, uh, several layers of messages to voters yeah, I think it's really, really unfortunate. Obviously, public safety and public health has to come first, but it's really unfortunate, that signaling, because it says there's danger. Don't go out. Don't go in big crowds. Well, what about waiting online to vote? What about running into all these people at the polling place? So what does that do to turnout? Now, there's been early voting in some of these states, so that could, in fact, save some of the messaging, you know, damage. But it is a damaging message, and it will affect turnout. And this, you know, we may look back in November and say it wasn't just... You know, the messaging and the politics of coronavirus, it was actually the mechanics of it and the fact that we have in-person voting and people are frightened to vote. Does it also send a message, though, that perhaps the current administration isn't doing enough and maybe trying to get other people uh, who might have been on the fence sort of leaning now toward the Democrats? You know, fear is a tricky thing because fear can be, you know, run out of your control. You know, Trump managed, managed to instill fear, fear of immigrants, fear of the other when he ran and he won. But it can get out of control, as we see with the coronavirus. Then when you try to tamp down the fear and say, no, 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 it's not that bad, it's not that bad, I'm doing a good job, people don't believe you anymore because you've stoked up their fear. Mm. So I think that's, you know, that's a very tricky thing to manage. And so I don't think the Democrats need to do that against Trump. I think the country is doing that in and of itself. And that's by 
in his strongest advantage right now. We saw from his speech last night. I'm the guy who will stay calm, and I'm the guy who knows how to run the country, and I can run the federal government efficiently. And we're going to see a really, you know, the, let's get back to Bernie voters really quickly. We're going to see service sector people, people on the lower end of the income strata, really hurt when restaurants are empty, when hotels, planes, all of these kinds of industries are suffering. Those people suffer, and those people are Bernie voters. Some of them might have been Trump voters. And that's the big question mark. Will they blame the president for their negative economic circumstances if this should unfold the way that we think it will? One last quick question. Got about a minute here. A national economic advisor, Larry Kudlow, says they'll be announcing an economic stimulus plan soon and perhaps tax cuts, uh, pay- payroll tax cuts coming up in late summer, early fall. A uh, skeptic might think they're slow walking that tax cut plan for timing purposes to have the most impact on the election in November. What say you? Well, I, I, I think, I mean, you've already seen Republicans and Democrats on the Hill saying well, we have a trillion dollar deficit already. Social Security is kind of still fragile. I'm just not sure a payroll cut's mm-hmm. going to happen. A regular tax cut hurts people who pay taxes. But so many of our American working people do not, they pay negative taxes. They're living on the edge. And they're the ones that are going to really hurt. I'm not sure that's going to help them, but they can still vote. So I'm not sure that's effective. It reminds me of Elizabeth Warren's Medicare for All plan. We'll tell you what the plan is four weeks from now. When in fact, they're running the country. They they ought to have the plan today. So I'm not sure this is going to help them in any in any way. All right. I want to thank you, Wendy, for joining us today. Wendy Schiller, political science, or yes, political science chair at Brown University. Thanks for your time. And you can read more about all of these stories on Bloomberg.com or on the Bloomberg Terminal. And a reminder, you can follow all of the latest on Bloomberg Radio in Washington on Bloomberg 99.1 and 105.7 FM HD2. Karen. All right, Amy, thank you. And we are seeing another day of reversals in many major markets with U.S. stock index futures dropping, the dollar weakening, and Treasury yields falling after surging a day earlier. Right now, S&P futures are down 54 points. They're down 1.9 percent. Dow futures down 438 points. And NASDAQ futures down 146. The DAX in Germany is up one and a quarter percent. The CAC in Paris up 1.6 percent. And the FTSE 100 is up nine tenths of a percent. 10-year Treasury up 29.30 seconds, yield 0.70%, and the yield on the two-year, 0.43%. 30-year yields 1.19%. NYMEX crude oil down 2.5% on 87 cents at $33.50 a barrel. And COMEX gold is up 2 tenths percent, up $3.40 at 16.63.80 an ounce. The euro is at 1.1326 against the dollar. And Bloomberg Surveillance with Tom Keen, Jonathan Farrell, and Lisa Abramowitz is straight ahead. For Amy Morris, I'm Karen Moscow, and this is Bloomberg. We've all been in one, but how much do you really know about black cabs? For instance, did you know that a black cab has to be tall enough to accommodate an individual wearing a bowler hat? That's a lot of space for you and your briefcase. Or that free now drivers can use the bus lanes, the perfect getaway to make your meeting in time. And with two-minute central London pickups, you needn't waste time searching for a taxi. Just download the free now app today and take the hassle out of getting round London. Hey, have you heard? The Mayor of London has launched his latest van scrappage scheme to help tackle London's toxic air. Small businesses or sole traders like me with a polluting van could now get £7,000, which you could use to trade up to a Euro 6 vehicle. And you could get an extra £2,500 towards running costs if you go electric. The scheme is now even easier to qualify for, and it's open to any businesses with up to 50 employees, like mine. So, I'm going to search TfL Scrappage to see if I'm eligible and apply. You should do the same. To the Mayor of London and TfL, every journey matters. Matt Letizier, what did you make of that performance today? Well, it really was a game of two halves, to be honest, Jeff. Leicester came out in the first half really, really... Uh, Letiz! What's up, Jeff? Run for it! What the... <laughs> Move over, football! Cheltenham coming through. And Skybatter on the charge. With a roaring first-race special every day of the festival. Skybet. That's betting better. Applies to first bet on the first race at Cheltenham on the main race market only. Place terms apply. Eligibility restrictions. Offers vary each day. Check site for details. T's and C's apply. 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org. 
the puzzle. Can you make a call given the data? Which segments of Alphabet's business are most likely to come under scrutiny? Get all the pieces. They're getting mixed signals from governments. He's failed to gain traction. Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business, Radio.com, and iHeart Radio apps, and BloombergRadio.com. Bloomberg, the world is listening. From the financial capital of the world, 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Radio. This is Bloomberg Surveillance Economics. Once we get through coronavirus, it's very supportive and very stimulative. Central banks themselves got caught hostage by market finance. OPEC Plus is at war with itself. We know we can create America's energy dependence again. Investment. The market's anticipating the rate getting very close to zero in fairly short order. Volatility is back, so that's going to make for more cautious trading. Bloomberg Surveillance with Tom Keane, Jonathan Farrell, and Lisa Abramowitz on Bloomberg Radio. From New York City, for our audience worldwide, good morning, good morning. This is Bloomberg Surveillance. Coming up on the program, stock futures are lower, investors waiting for the White House's plan, the Bank of England following the Fed delivering an emergency rate cut as the ECB president warns of a 2008-style crisis and less Europe hacks. From the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio, hello Wednesday. Here is your Wednesday morning price action. Equity futures down and down hard, off by two percentage points on the S&P 500. In the bond market, a bid for Treasuries yields come in 10 basis points to 0.7%. And in foreign exchange, cable gaps are lower and then recovers all of the losses and some against the dollar. The pound is now 129.25. Just extraordinary, John. There's no other way to put it, folks. We were listening verbatim to Governor Carney and Governor-designate uh, Bailey go at it. And, and, John, I was thunderstruck. And, of course, John Farrell, folks, has had a lot of experience of following Bank of England and ECB. That was a conversation of an institution back to 1694 with independence from 1997. That conversation, I would suggest, couldn't happen at the Fed and certainly can't happen tomorrow at the ECB. Yeah, and I think you make a really good point. I was in the room at the Bank of England shortly after the Brexit vote, and I remember the Bank of England and Governor Carney specifically bringing the full weight of the institution <clears throat> into a moment like the moment we're in right now. And I thought everything he had to say... Yeah was the exact precise thing he needed to say in this moment. This could be a temporary shock, but how temporary it will be depends on how they act today, and officials must help to build that bridge from where we are now to where we need to get to. Certainly his finest finest moment, I thought. I know you thought around Brexit it was good. I'm not going to read the whole statement, but this is prudence with a purpose. It's resilience with a reason, and I heard the word resilience like 18 times. How resilient can Madame Lagarde be tomorrow? She's got a really, really difficult task in front of her tomorrow, Lisa. She can't do the kinds of things that the ECB would like to do, that the Bank of England has done, because the Bank of England today is going to work with the Treasury. Yeah. That's what is so unique about this moment in the UK. They're able to do an emergency rate cut, a lending program, cut the counter-cyclical capital buffer as well. And, Lisa, do it on the day that the budget in the UK is being released. And that's the critical coordination that the UK can engineer that Europe is going to really struggle to. Right, and Christine Lagarde is trying to use rhetoric instead to get European leaders to actually get together saying we are going to see another 2008-style crisis if you guys don't get on the ball and create some programs. I do want to talk to uh, a point, John. I know we were discussing this before the show, what the reaction in markets really is saying. To me, it seems like there was a sigh of relief in British assets and risk assets. There was a sense yeah. that this was an optimistic, this was a positive, not what we saw in the U.S. after the Fed's emergency rate cut. And I'm wondering whether this is sort of an endorsement or if this is just me reading too much into a day's market reaction. But still, it well, seems to be exactly the prescription that you were calling we, for as well. We've got a set of headlines out of Germany, folks. And John, uh, translate these four. They go back to the build headlines of yesterday with Merkel with some really inflammatory comments about who could be infected from the virus. But John, more recent headlines, Germany Germany won't block EU crisis spending plan. Germany That's will do whatever is necessary to face the crisis, according to Chancellor Merkel. That headline just crossing the terminal right now. I hope that's the case, Tom, 
because Europe right now behind the curve in the same way the United States is too. This is Christine Lagarde, the ECB president, two weeks ago, February 27th in the Financial Times, not at the stage where it would have a lasting impact on inflation and require a monetary policy <clears throat> response. March 9th, reportedly telling EU leaders, without coordinated action, Europe will see a scenario that will remind many of us of the 2008 crisis. And then you bring it over to the United States where, you know, at least if you're so good at this, what is the gaming right now of Fed rate cuts to come if they have to work in a, in a in almost a vacuum of only that single monetary policy tool, as we saw the body language, folks, yesterday uh, was it the day before between the president and even Senate Republicans. You know, it, it's a photo shoot, but photo shoots right now aren't working, are they? President Trump did show up to the press conference that everyone was expecting him to deliver some details yesterday, which is part of the reason why we saw a bearish <clears throat> turn in the markets. But looking just right now at Fed funds futures, we're seeing basically zero rates uh, come in the next two meetings, right? Come by, the, by April. And meanwhile, one thing that I want to point to, the German inflation expectations are actually ticking up just a touch on the longer term on the heels of some of the rhetoric out of uh, officials. In the United States, the inflation expectation for the next five to ten years has fallen to the lowest since 1999. 1.18% long-term inflation. People do not have faith that we are going to get the policies that can actually generate growth over a longer term, and those expectations have fallen off a cliff, John. We'll try and talk a little more about that a little bit later. Let's turn now to the UK with Rupert Harrison, BlackRock Multi-Asset Strategies Portfolio Manager, formerly of the Treasury as well, working alongside the former Chancellor George Osborne. Rupert, fantastic to have you with us on the program this morning, especially on a morning like this morning. Rupert, let's talk about the response from the Bank of England and what may still come from Treasury a little bit later. Is Rupert Harrison with us? Yeah, yeah, hi. Sorry, sorry. I, uh, I, I, I agree very strongly with what you've all been saying in the sense that I think this is a real demonstration of strength from the UK system. I think it shows a sort of maturity from the Bank of England, which is an institution that is, I think, comfortable in its independence, conf confident of its independence, uh, and therefore willing to be seen to act in a coordinated way with the Treasury. We saw some similar things in the past, uh, the funding for lending for, uh, scheme set up in 2012, uh, but I think it is a big advantage of having strong, credible institutions. I think, as you say, it would be very difficult for the Fed to do something similar. Indeed, we saw the Fed deliberately separate its emergency 50 basis points cut from the G7 finance minister's call, I think largely due to wanting to avoid the perception of uh, impositions on on its independence. So yes, I do think this is UK institutions uh, demonstrating how you can boost confidence by coordination. Rupert, let's talk about how important it is to help SMEs in a moment like the moment we're in right now. It seems to be a big focus of the Bank of England. How do we get that focus to go beyond the UK into places like Europe and into places like the United States? Well, look, I think that the, the policy community get it. Uh, I, I think that we will see uh, further action in the budget in the UK today. You know, the, the, these, these term funding schemes for banks with incentives to lend to SMEs, they're, they're similar to the kind of things we did in the UK in 2012 with funding for lending. They're okay. Frankly, the banks can gain the targets, and this is not a way to guarantee that you're going to get cash to SMEs. You have to see finance ministries acting really to get cash to the SMEs that are in trouble on top of the bank, right. central bank actions. I think you will see that in Europe. I think it will be a, a you know, a, a combination of European wide and frankly you just have to gonna have to wait and see national level action. Um and I, I hope that we will see it in the U.S., but of course it's going to be a much more difficult uh, mechanism to get agreement around that. Right. Idea, even though the, po the policy community, I think, now fully understands that that's what's needed. Rupert, let me ask you the same question I asked of our Stephanie Flanders earlier today. Did the reason we get that, this action today, was it because of Prime Minister Johnson? Was it was because we had essentially a pro-Brexit vote? Was it because we have a new independence or free thinking in the United Kingdom less attached? to the European continent? No, I don't think so. I think this is because of the sort of historic patterns of working of the UK institutions. I think the Treasury and the Bank of England have for a long time now worked well together. Uh, and I think that there is an understanding in the Treasury and the bank that this is a time for, you know, this is not a time for holding back. So I think you will see Chancellor Rishi Sunak in the budget later uh, today, uh, you know, if anything, you know, doing too much. I think he will very much not want to be seen as kind of under delivering. I think it will be over deliver, belt and braces, uh, you know, resilience and 
uh, you know, uh, insurance against what might be to come. I don't think that's you know, particular to this government. I think it speaks more to a sort of historic strength of UK institutions. But of course, it is very welcome to see the UK, uh, I think, performing kind of well uh, internationally compared to other countries. Going to your uh, core, which is investing, how does this give you conviction when it comes to uh, putting on a trade? In other words, are you going to invest more in UK assets as a result of what the policymakers did? It certainly at the margin makes us feel more comfortable that the UK is going to do everything possible to avoid permanent economic damage from this disruption. Uh, but frankly, you know, I, I think we've seen in market action over the last few days that while policy actions are welcome, you know, people are, in market are very, very aware that policymakers are, are secondary at the moment to the sort of fundamentals of the spread of the virus. And, uh, you know, in a sense, markets are paying more attention to the to the negatives, i.e. when and how widespread right. are restrictions on activity going to be. I think that it's, it, it's about putting confidence in place so that if we do get to a peak situation where people can see beyond the peak of the virus, that's when people will take uh, confidence from policy measures being in place to prevent permanent damage. Yeah. And that's where we'll help see the kind of more rapid bounce back. Rupert Harrison, thank you so much with BlackRock this morning, joining us after an historic moment for the bank of England. Greg Vellier, John Farrell, just publishing a scathing note. A sense of panic is engulfing at Washington. He goes on to notice that Congress will leave town at the end of this week without agreeing on a fiscal response to the crisis. Boy, is that such a different tone of what you're just talking to Dr. Harrison about. Yeah, I don't know if I'd align my own interpretation with that of Greg Vellier respectfully. I don't see any sense of urgency, never mind a sense of panic. Do you see a sense of urgency in Washington Not right now? Not from the now? president, no question about it. I don't see it, it from the administration at the moment either. I caught up with Larry Kudlow this past Friday, and when I asked him about payroll tax cuts, yeah. he said there are pros and cons. I lean against it. Oh, come on, I Navarro, lean against oh, the on, payroll tax cuts, and that seems to be the policy right, right now. No, Navarro oh. is for payroll tax cuts, and Mnuchin and Kudlow are aggressively against them, along with many members of Congress. That's exactly what I was going to say, whether they could actually get it passed is another question. A lot of conflicting reports, not giving a lot of conviction to the tape, and that's really going to be the question. What will it take to regain the confidence of people that they actually do have their finger on the pulse and that there is a sense of urgency, John? A key story through the next couple of hours right here on Bloomberg Surveillance. Fantastic lineup of guests for you as well as we count you down to an ECB rate decision that comes up tomorrow. For now though, let's get you some headlines. Some news worldwide. We can do that from New York with Bloomberg's John Tucker. Good morning, John. And Jonathan, good morning. The U.S. has shifted into a new phase of its coronavirus response after efforts to stamp out sparks of an outbreak have failed. Authorities now focusing on limiting damage. Dr. Robert Redfield is head of the CDC. We're in a containment in certain areas uh, I would say in general we're in a contained, containment blended mitigation. In some areas we're in high mitigation. Well, Massachusetts reported 51 new cases Tuesday tied to a drug maker's business conference. New York added 31 and in Washington State where the infection has ripped through one nursing home and spread to several more. 105 more people were diagnosed. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says the state will use the National Guard to help set up a mile radius zone in New Rochelle. The state will close schools, religious spaces and other venues where people gather there after more than 100 cases were found in Westchester County. And after having what he called another good night, Joe Biden reached out to Bernie Sanders and his supporters. I want to thank Bernie Sanders and his supporters for their tireless energy and their passion. We share a common goal, and together we'll defeat Donald Trump. Bernie Sanders returned to his Burlington, Vermont home before the polls closed Tuesday and skipped the traditional primary night address to supporters. There's another round of primaries next week in Florida, Ohio, Illinois, and Arizona that now could determine whether the race between Biden and Sanders drags on or effectively ends. Global News 24 hours a day, on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm John Tucker, and this is Bloomberg. Jonathan. John Tucker, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Here's your price action this Wednesday morning. Equity futures are lower by a little more than 2%, just off session lows on the S&P 500. In foreign exchange, the euro with just a little bit of a lift. Euro dollar up by four-tenths of 1%. As Chancellor Merkel says, Germany will do whatever is necessary to face the crisis. 24 hours out from an ECB rate decision. From New York this morning, good morning. This is Bloomberg Radio. 
Germany will do whatever is necessary to face the crisis. 24 hours out. Not completing high school is more of a social thing than it was an academic thing. I came out in the 11th grade. Nobody was embracing you. Kids were embracing you. Cool. It was very difficult to be gay. Not even in all these years have passed, I still had that longing to have my diploma. The hard part was determining that I was going to do it. I definitely didn't know it was. At age 30, with the help of her mentor, Carissa finished her high school diploma. I have a mentor, Maria, and she convinced me to continue my education and finish what I started to get my diploma. She never judges. She's a true role model. If you're even considering getting your high school diploma, I have a mentor. Go get it. You can do it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you are thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Asset managers who seize change to launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new technology to re-engineer the investor experience are often rewarded. However, in an industry paralyzed with complexity, few act with agility or decisively. Few run their business strategically. Yet, the most competitive managers in the market know with a right partner and a flexible operating platform, you can. Go boldly toward change with SEI Investment Manager Services. I'm Steve Meyer, President of SEI's Investment Manager Services. At SEI, we understand the emerging forces that will define success for asset managers and what firms will need to compete tomorrow. That's why we continually optimize SEI's global operating platforms. If your business requires greater agility, our advanced technology, integrated best-in-class systems, and multi-asset expertise can be your catalyst for business transformation. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more at seic.com slash seize change. Influential. Delayed at the dentist and now you're late for school pickup. You need a free now. Need to take the dog to the vet before lunch. Should have gotten a free now. Trying to get four kids and their baggage to the airport. Free now. Sometimes you can't get from A to B fast enough. Download the Free Now app today for quick pickups and reliable drivers, no matter the situation. Less hassle, more hustle with Free Now. Hey, have you heard? The Mayor of London has launched his latest van scrappage scheme to help tackle London's toxic air. Small businesses or sole traders like me with a polluting van could now get £7,000, which you could use to trade up to a Euro 6 vehicle. And you could get an extra £2,500 towards running costs if you go electric. The scheme is now even easier to qualify for, and it's open to any businesses with up to 50 employees, like mine. So, I'm going to search TfL Scrappage to see if I'm eligible and apply. You should do the same. To the Mayor of London and TfL, every journey matters. This ad is made from 100% recycled commercials. Just like Smart Waters, all new bottles are made from 100% recycled plastic. What's that number again? 100%. Every Smart Water bottle is made using recycled plastic. And because it's still 100% recyclable, the plastic will be used again and again. Smart Water, now in a 100% recycled plastic bottle. Label and cap 100% recyclable, but not made from recycled plastic yet. We're working on it. The Bloomberg Business App and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow. And another day of reversals in many major markets with U.S. stock index futures falling this morning. The dollar weakening and Treasury yields dropping after surging a day earlier. We check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. S&P futures down about 61 points. Dow futures down 476, down 1.9 percent. And Nasdaq futures are down 156. Seven. The DAX in Germany is up one and a quarter percent. Ten-year Treasury up one and one thirty-second. Yield 0.69 percent. The yield on the two-year 0.43 percent. Thirty-year yield 1.18 percent. Nymex crude oil is down 2.7 percent or 92 cents at 33.43 a barrel. Comex gold is up four tenths percent or seven dollars ten cents at 16.67.30 an ounce. The euro 1.1331 against the dollar. The yen 104.95. And that's. 
It's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Tom, John, and Lisa. Uh, thanks so much, Karen. Greatly appreciate it. Futures negative 62, Dow futures negative 497. Well, David Wilson on individual stocks coming along later with a lot of different stories out there right now. The story today is central bank action and everybody creating, uh, keeping up rather with four, five, six viral stories. For those of us, Bloomberg 1130 in New York, it's about New Rochelle to the north here. Of course, for all of you listening across the continent of Europe, it is Italy and maybe in Asia, it's a story of South Korea. Guess what? It all devolves on the Bloomberg terminal down to foreign exchange. And John, as you know, at Rabobank, with not only their speculation side of FX, but they've got huge hedging operations of businesses trying to deal with foreign exchange. And I have to say, Rabobank has had a wonderful call coming into 2020 about where rates would go on Fed funds. They were looking for a move towards zero. Pretty much nobody else was, and yep. they look dead on as we're just a couple of months into the new year. Let's get straight to Jane Foley, shall we, of Rubber Bank, head of FX Strategy, joining us out of London. Jane, fantastic to catch up with you. Let's just get your initial response to the action we've seen from the BOE and the action we're about to see from the ECB. Well, from the BOE, certainly we really have had a show this morning. This was not about just an interest rate cut, but of course we saw those other measures as well. So this was really going in big. And of course it's Carney's last fling. He leaves the Bank of England in just a few days' time, hands over to Bailey, uh, and he's really left Bailey with potentially not an awful lot else to do. So his words, I think, this morning and his press conference are certainly also reminiscent perhaps of the Draghi days, and Draghi was uh, the president of the ECB. And of course Carney was talking about all necessary steps to, to, to further support the UK economy and financial system, really trying to get home that message that the Bank of England are prepared to act, they have acted, but also to coordinate with the with the, with the um, HM Treasury, Her Majesty's Treasury. There will be the budget in, in just over an hour's time in the UK, and now, of course, uh, the market is even more anticipating that the Chancellor will have plenty of giveaways up his sleeve to promote the UK economy. Certainly, that was always going to be part of this budget but also uh, to really pre prevent the economy from, uh, or to protect the economy from the headwinds that are inevitable, really, as part of this coronavirus crisis. Full credit to the institution. They've absolutely nailed it today. They've said all the right things. They're focused on all the right things. And some of this is unique to the United Kingdom, Jane. As you know, there are certain things the Bank of England and the Treasury can do that other jurisdictions, other regions just can't. So let's get to the ECB. What can they do tomorrow that they haven't done already? Well, again, I think everybody anticipates that it is going to be a little bit more difficult for the ECB because, of course, the discount rate is already in negative territory. Um, we are, and everybody else, I think, is anticipating a, 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 a further a cut in the discount rate, another 10 basis points, uh, possibly the repo rate, of course, already in, in negative uh, territory. But what else can they do? Yes, everyone's anticipating that they will do targeted uh, measures, uh, Teltros, for instance. What they can do and what they will do with Italy, I think, is of particular uh, note the uh, Italian crisis in terms of the coronavirus, of course, really uh, acute uh, now. Uh, the country, of course, since the, since the last couple of days, in total lockdown. And clearly, uh, the government uh, is, is going to try and push out more fiscal measures, but it needs the support from uh, the ECB as well. Jane, I'm struck by the market response, the idea that the market is cheering what the Bank of England is doing, and frankly, what they expect the ECB to do at their meeting tomorrow. The dollar is the standout as being the weaker... Uh, of the developed market currencies today. How much will currencies continue to be a proxy for people's uh, expectations and, frankly, faith in institutions that they can do what it takes to stave off some of the longer-term effects of this, uh, at least now, uh, short-term uh, breach? I think if we really want a proxy in the currency markets, we have to go back to the yen. The yen is perhaps the most established safe haven currency. And we're trading today at uh, just below 105, so 104.92 right now in, in dollar yen. Now, that is uh, well above uh, the lows that we saw in dollar yen earlier on in the week. So perhaps that's indicating that we are uh, off the worst of the crisis. I think there is a problem in the short term in looking at the movements in, in say, euro dollar and to try and give, give that a, a gauge. Because what we've seen, certainly this week, and probably beginning at last week is that a lot of people unwinding carry trades um, and that I think has really affected the movements in, in euro dollar. Um, I think though if we stand back and look at the big picture if you consider uh, an investor um, you're probably not in this period of time really going to consider taking on risky investments moving into emerging markets as such and I think for many many investors they will be coming back into or say now in, 
in safe havens, that might be the yen. But I think for many investors, it will still be the dollar. So I don't think the dollar has necessarily lost its appeal as a store of value. There is still this huge transactional uh, uh, part yeah. that the dollar plays in, in many people's lives. But I think the, the, the unwinding of carry trades has really skewed what we've seen in euro dollar in recent days. Jane, it's right where I wanted to go, which is to the Rabobank expertise on sensing business internationally and, of course, with your heritage in, in Europe in the transactional. How exposed are corporations to the wrong hedging right now? Do we need to worry about FX hedging on corporation sheets like we do in commodities? Or, or are they just not that exposed? It, it depends. I mean, the ones that have hedged um, should be better protected. Um, I think for many corporates, and, and, and this is a, the case around the world, it might be the corporates that have high levels of debt that might be a little bit more worried or we might be more worried about. It might be more difficult for them to roll over that debt. And that's exactly why uh, the markets are rejoicing when we see uh, the, the Bank of England and the Treasury getting together uh, to make the sort of commitments to try and protect those firms, particularly the smaller firms that might be at most risk. Now, when it comes back to, to hedging, often what we see is, uh, you know, historically, is, is when you have a period of relatively low volatility in, in uh, foreign exchange markets, that can make some firms get a little bit yeah. complacent, and they might think, well, why should I pay the cost to hedge when there is no volatility anyway? Now, there is a danger that because there was limited volatility last year that some firms may not uh, be properly hedged. That will be right. potentially quite damaging for them. No, the other side of the trade we don't talk enough of. Jane Foley, thank you so much this morning with Bank. We welcome all of you across the nation. Of course, for those working at home, don't forget our digital product, including Sirius XM Channel 119, Bloomberg.com, iHeartRadio, and a whole bunch of other uh, digital services uh, as well. Futures negative 70. Dow futures simply deteriorate. 24,294. Dow futures negative 556. And John, look at the VIX within one point of that 54 level. And the bid is back in the bond market too. Ten-year yields down 11 basis points on a treasury. Zero. 0.69% from New York this morning. Good morning. This is Bloomberg Radio. Business is constantly evolving. Is your financial printer evolving to keep ahead of the curve? At Command Financial, we are redefining financial printing by providing industry-leading expertise, leveraging technology, and honing processes and best practices. Every day, Command helps SEC registrants, as well as members of their working groups, including securities attorneys and investment bankers, prepare, file, and disseminate regulatory and disclosure documents, such as registration statements, M&A documents, and mutual fund prospectuses and reports. Command provides a full range of services to help you effectively complete your deal, meet your disclosure requirements, and achieve your shareholder communications objectives. Visit our website at commandfinancial.com and learn how we're evolving, not only with the times, but also with your business requirements. Command Financial, redefining financial printing. Elite advisory firms rely on BNY Mellon's Pershing to meet the needs of their most complex clients. Karen Novak, Chief Operating Officer at Pershing Advisor Solutions, explains how. At BNY Mellon's Pershing, we bring customized insights and strategies to help you grow your advisory business and stay on the leading edge. We can support the needs of your most sophisticated clients with a full range of investment and wealth management solutions from access to private banking to consolidated bank and brokerage custody. Learn why so many of the largest advisory firms turn to us for the financial strength and high-touch service that BNY Mellon's Pershing can provide. Are you well positioned to stand out from your competition? Learn more at Pershing.com or call 800-445-4467. Brokerage custody provided by Pershing LLC and other services provided by Pershing Advisor Solutions LLC. Both members of FINRA and SIPC. Private banking and bank custody provided by BNY Mellon NA. Member FDIC. Hiya, Johnny from Solly Old News. I'm in a right party mood today, mate. It was a roll down in last Saturday's lotto draw, and thousands of you won a bigger share of the jackpot. The shop's been buzzing with winners. Come on, Sandra, let's crank up them tunes. Lotto from the National Lottery. Your numbers make amazing happen. Rules and procedures apply. Players must be 16 or over.